need something? Thing going and it didn't work. I will. Okay. Okay. Good evening, everybody, counselors and members of the public. Welcome. Uh, this is the December 19, 2019 meeting of the Northampton City Council. My name is uh, Ryan McDonald. That's all right. Um, I'll be presiding tonight. First thing, let me tell you, uh, these proceedings, as they always are, being audio and video recorded. If anybody needs any as, uh, assistance hearing, we have devices. Um, and we're, we have some technical issues. I'm sorry? He wants, he wants to see the screen. Yeah, the screen, we're having a little technical difficulties. We normally have a staff person who is not here today because of illness, okay? So we'll have to make do. Uh, but I will do my best to make sure everyone has the information they need. Uh, if you are a member of the public, just feel free to ask. And there are agendas, I think, up on the podium if you would like an agenda for yourself. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, if you need assistance hearing, we have devices that are available in the lobby. Uh, feel free to avail yourself of those. We'll begin with public comment. Uh, this is a chance for the public to speak on any issue you wish. I ask you only to keep it to uh, about three minutes so that everybody can have a chance to speak. And please remember that our rules prohibit having a back and forth. It's your time to speak. But you are encouraged, of course, to follow up with your counselor or me. Feel free to call or email me if you want to have a conversation about anything in, in more detail. Okay. Um, let's see, do we have a sign-up sheet? Yep. Thank you. If you haven't signed up, that's okay. We'll, we can thank you very much. Okay. So the first person is uh, Anthony Patillo. If you would come on up, and the floor is yours. I've got my little timer here, so. Anthony Patillo, Autumn Drive, Florence. First thing I want to say is general overrides are forever. Let me repeat that. General overrides are forever. What do you mean when you say that? Right now, we've got $5.1 million that were passed in a previous overrides that are added to our tax levy every year to calculate our general property taxes, every year. If we add this $2.5 million, it'll be $7.6 million that's added every year. It's not new growth, it's not new structures, it's not new businesses that add jobs or pay taxes. It's a bubble that goes forward and uh, compounds upward forever. It's not fair, it's not right, it's not sustainable. The city prides itself on being sustainable, and yet we're using general overrides to balance our budget. It's not right. This is hard for me. I've got children, I've got grandkids that are in the school system. I served public safety for 17 years, I know. This is not like a debt exclusion. It's not like the fire station or school addition where we pay down and it's gone. This goes on forever. This has a real effect on businesses, on senior citizens who are on fixed income, on businesses that rent, and apartment dwellers, because they have to absorb the costs. It can't go on. We can't keep going to the well and doing this. Again, general overrides are forever, forever, and enough is enough. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Patillo. Um, Rodney Kunath, and I understand Rodney. Yep. I'm going to speak for Rodney tonight. Good evening. Happy to be tonight. So I'm having this little to eat. Hello. You can go ahead. 
Thank you. I just learned about another override in the city of Northampton. It is the second in only four years. What really is happening? The city is supposed to receive new tax revenues from new expensive homes on Hospital Hill villages. What about Smith College and new tax revenues from Round Hill too? We, the lifelong Northampton seniors, seniors are worried about this override. We have limited incomes, very scary. We simply cannot afford this. We are very disappointed. We, the seniors, have been faithfully and grateful to pay our expenses and taxes for a great many years. It is about time we must have relief from overrides and property taxes. Cost of living has gone up recently. Electric bills going up. Heating bills going up. Comcast TV, again, going up every year. We still have stormwater bills, so why so long? House, auto, health, still going up. Food shopping is more expensive. Yes, we support the schools, teachers pay, police, fire, and public works departments, etc., and our senior citizens' house, too. If there are any unnecessary projects, they should be deleted or eliminated. Lobby for more chapter money from the State House, income and sales tax. And the deferral and exemption should be increased so that the seniors will not worry about losing their beloved homes. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Um, and now I'd like to ask uh, Stephen Callahan. Mr. Callahan. Hi, uh, my name is Steve Callahan. I worked in the city for 30 years in uh, Smith Vocational School, Central Office, and for the public schools. I served as a library trustee for 16 years. And in all three experiences, I had publicly elected supervisors. And the mayor might have one vote out of nine on the city, but not the total vote, okay? And I've had positive experiences in all three of those situations. I've been a volunteer medical driver at the senior center for the last eight or nine years, okay? I have not had a positive experience there in the past four or five months. Uh, I just want to report an update. As, uh, I met a woman coming out of the uh, eye doctor's office. I helped her through the doors, and I uh, went in did my work, came out about 10 or 15 minutes later, and she was standing with a walk, shaking a little bit, looking out the window. I said, well, can I help you? What are you looking for? She says, a white van. And I said, oh, okay. Uh, what does it say on the side? I'll go around and look. And it said, you know, Northampton, either Council of Aging or Senior Center. And I said to her, well, do you know that you can get a ride and somebody will take you there, drop you off, and wait for you and pick you up, even help you in and help you out, you know, for eight dollars from the Senior Center? And she said, oh, no. Nobody told me that when I called for a ride, okay? And that's some of the things that are going on. Uh, I still have a minute left, son of a gun. But the other thing I want to suggest is that in a situation where one person can rule against the board, the advisory board for the citizens, okay, and put in an administrator that works on his agenda rather than the agenda of the citizens that they're trying to support, whether it's children in school, okay, whether it's library patrons, okay, whether it's senior citizens. But if one person can make a decision with no input, okay, from the citizens or to ignore the input and it becomes a disaster, there's a problem. And I, you know, I should probably talk to the next city council because I guess five of you are leaving, the ones who are smiling, you know. But I just want to say that you can't ignore the people. And again, if, if it's destroyed, I mean, it's a disaster. There are people out there who are not getting services. And there are people out there who are saying, the environment has changed. You know how it changed? Somebody leaves, maybe work 30 hours a week, 10, 15 years, they knew all the people. They talked, they said hi, whatever. They're gone. Well, what can we do to achieve some uh, economic efficiencies? Why don't we bring in contract people who are there for 45 minutes, you know, and then 
they're up, okay? What's the difference in that situation? Atmosphere, okay, in the sense of people belonging, okay? But uh, that's all I'd say. Yep. Just in time. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Callahan. Uh, is Bill Muzani here, please? Welcome. Hi, I'm Bill Muzanti, 1005 Florence Road. <clears throat> and I'd just uh, like to add my name to, in opposition to the Silver Ride. I think we've had, we've had enough of these and we, we think we're gonna need another one in five years and when is it gonna stop? Enough is enough. If I'm, I can't go to my employer and say, I want to override. I need more money. That wouldn't work. So we just need we need some relief for the senior citizens. Okay. Thank you for that comment. Thank you. Uh, Chris Polanis. Will that pick me up? I think it, it sh looks like we want to make sure it does. Yes. Okay. Uh, Chris Palamas, 659 Park Hill Road. Um, first of all, I love this as an exercise in democracy. As son and grandson of an immigrant, the, the world we live in today, this is a precious exercise. Um, but as you know, a process has been going on in the city for a number of years, evaluating the capacity of city government to meet its obligations under Title II of the Americans with Disabilities Act. It is a process that, for me at least, has been extremely frustrating and I believe unnecessarily slow. Last spring, the Commission on Disability submitted to the mayor a draft report entitled ADA Self-Evaluation and Transition Plan Update. I know that some of you have read the draft and I urge all of you to do it also those who will be joining the council in the new year. You'll find 12 or 13 recommendations ad addressing discrete areas in which action is needed. But the fundamental message that underlies the report is that what is needed above all is continuity, coordination, and commitment. The mayor has taken a first step. He's announced that the position of the ADA coordinator is to be transferred from the Director of Senior Services to a new position under the Office of Planning and Sustainability. This seems to me a modest step in a positive direction. The Office of Planning and Sustainability is run by one of the most respected and capable administrators in city government. Wayne Fiden has, been a great, has done a great deal of good work. He's been a good partner in improving the accessibility of the pedestrian environment around City Hall and in integrating some access planning and other public processes. What I fear is that the person who fills the position may not have the time necessary or the specialized skills necessary to be an effective ADA coordinator. I expect and anticipate that a better job will be done on physical access planning under the new arrangement, but I'm concerned whether the breadth of ADA obligations will be fully addressed. I'm specifically concerned, it's great to see some assistive listening systems here tonight, but I'm specifically concerned of the need to pro strengthen provisions and technology around effective communication to ensure full participation of people who are deaf and hard of hearing and have other forms of learning processing disabilities. I leave you with a question that I asked to the newest, one of the newest members of the commission. <coughs> have you ever seen a municipal event other than one sponsored by the Commission on Disability at which sign language interpretation was provided? The one other area I'll mention that is so critical to this future position is the ability to train and work with other departments so it really becomes integral across city government. And I'm gonna come back because we'll do this in three minute segments talking with you all. Do you, do you have anything Thank to you. wrap up? Do you have anything further just to wrap up now? You're free if you wanna just- Oh, I would, I would do that at, at some length. I do think this is a positive step in the right direction but again, and it's not that Northampton is by any means exceptional. My expectation of this city is that we have the capacity to lead. 
You know, it's not that other communities don't lag behind and that the Commonwealth doesn't lag behind. But I really think we have the potential to show some leadership here, and we haven't done it yet. And let's get it in gear and move on it, because the public process is just grinding so slowly. Thank you, Mr. Palamas. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is Claire Lebdell here? If I mispronounce your name, please correct me. Hi, I'm Claire Lobdell, it's not close, um, from 47 Fairview Avenue, and I wanted to speak in favor of putting the override on the ballot. Um, you know, the, the reason that you have to do this is because of Proposition 2.5, 2.5, um, which is called that because, um, you know, property tax increases in Massachusetts can only be go up 2.5% every year, but, um, you know, the costs for running a municipal government increase more than 2.5% every year, which is why, you know, routinely you have to come to us, the voters, and ask us to approve a property tax increase. And, you know, it's been six years since you've done this. I have two kids in Bridge Street School where they're getting a great education. Um, I'm so glad that their teachers and teachers' aid and, you know, the school staff now has um, higher salaries that reflect, you know, the, the professional and wonderful work that they do, um, that that costs money and that needs to be paid for. You know, I, I appreciate your fiscal responsibility and taking such good care of our tax money that, you know, instead of initially, um, your the last override in 2013 was supposed to last four years. You were able to extend it to six years. I think that speaks to you know, your judicious use of our tax money. <coughs> I ask you to, you know, put this on the ballot in March. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, is Pamela Schwartz here? Hello, good evening. Um, my name is Pamela Schwartz. I'm at Columbus Avenue um, in Northampton, and I'm here to speak about the override. and. Um, to applaud those who have had the opportunity to vote in favor of it the last meeting and hope that you vote in favor of it this meeting. Um, and basically, I come to this, well, with three children who've <coughs> gone through the entire um, Northampton public school system and got a great education and um, a deep commitment to continuing it for all the children who are coming behind our family um, and on behalf of all the public services that we all depend upon. And if we had, it, it seems to be we, me we have a, it's all a matter of choices. <coughs> we have a choice to make mm -hmm. around whether or not we do this override um, or we suffer cuts to our services that we depend upon. And until we have massive progressive tax reform on a statewide level, you and we are put in this difficult position. And um, it's, again, a difficult position that comes down to choices. And I uh, encourage you and I, uh, again, applaud you for your support of it, support, support of this override, hope that that continues, hope that conversations can continue in your district um, to help people understand those choices in the face of the hardship that I deeply appreciate and I'm so grateful that there are exemptions for low-income seniors in the override proposal. I'm grateful that we're here at six years, in, at the six-year mark instead of the four-year mark, which is what was what we were promised at the last override. I was, as you, many of you know, deeply involved in the last override campaign and, um, and again, that it, we, it was a very difficult choice then too that the voters made in the name of wanting to protect what makes this community great. And we shouldn't be put in this position. And this is the work that needs to continue on a statewide level to make us not in this position, but there's a reality on the ground. And that reality is that to protect our schools, our police, our fire, our, the parks, what makes our community great requi requires us to raise more money this way. <coughs> and I will continue to work to raise money differently and more fairly, but right now, this year, for us to continue the community that we've got, we have to do this, and I thank you for your support. Thank you very much. Bill Newman. Uh, good evening. My name is Bill Newman. I live on Lyman Road. My office is on Main Street here in Northampton. 
I come tonight in my capacity as the director of the Western Massachusetts Office of the American Civil Liberties Union of Massachusetts because before the council tonight is a proposed ordinance that would ban face recognition technology in Northampton and I come to urge the council to pass that proposed ordinance tonight. Face recognition technology as it exists today is dangerous in two situations writ large. The first is when it works and the second is when it doesn't. When it comes to working, and I, that perhaps needs some air quotes, I think <coughs> what we all recognize is that the potential for devastating consequences of state surveillance cannot be overstated. And that technology such as this, untested and new as it is, is the handmaiden of totalitarianism, and we need not go further than the report on China in last weekend's newspapers to know how frightening this technology can be. And it is worth noting that today, as we are here, or this evening, as we have this, have, you have this consideration before you, there is no regulation of this technology by the federal government and none by <coughs> the states, and so it has become the responsibility of the municipalities of Massachusetts, Somerville and Cambridge, among others, to pass ordinances such as this. There is, of course, uh, uh, Justice Brandeis' famous statements that states are the laboratories of democracy, and in this instance, it's the municipalities are the laboratories of democracy for the state. Someday, sometime, maybe there will be a state regulation or law that covers this. Maybe someday, sometime, there will be a federal law. But as we are here tonight, there is not. And indeed, there is a report just issued today that I think you would find of interest. This is from the National Institute of Standards and Technology, which is a nonpartisan federal government research agency based at the U.S. Department of Commerce. And here's today's report from the U.S. Department of Commerce. The results of the NIST study, the one I just mentioned, indicates that face recognition algorithms still have particular trouble classifying the faces of darker-skinned women, a finding originally revealed in a very famous and undisputed report in 2017. The tests that were looked at, the algorithms that were examined, showed an enormous number of false positives and an enormous number of false negatives. The rate of false positives was higher for Asians and black people than for whites, both on one-to-one -one matches and for other tests that were done as well. The rate of false positives was highest for black women. Minorities and people of my, numbers of minority groups are the subjects who will be most hurt by this technology. I ask you to do tonight what is right, what is fair, what is just, what is in the public interest, and to pass this ordinance. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Newman. And now uh, we'll go to Paul Waterman, please. Well, good evening. Good evening. <clears throat> First of all, congratulations to the five counselors on their exceptional service over the past few years. It's a thankless job, uh, I know. Everybody thinks you're wrong. Few people think you're right, uh, but I want you to know that uh, we appreciate, most of us appreciate the work that you have done in guiding our city through some troubled times and some good times, so thank you. Um, and I also thank you for the opportunity to speak. My name is Paul Waterman. I live at 16 Fairview Avenue in this great city. I am the proud neighbor of Claire Lovedell, who spoke. However, we're on different sides of the override, which I'll speak about in a minute. Hopefully, she'll be proud of me, too. Um, first of all, I'd like you to know I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself, uh, having grown up in this city as a lifelong resident. I did not vote for Donald Trump. Um, that's supposed to be funny. <laughs> uh, my wife, uh, Don, and I are lifelong residents, uh, having gone through the Northampton school system as high school sweethearts. And she also reminds me to make sure that you understand that I do not speak for her. Yeah. I think that's funny, too. <laughs> I've been on the school committee, I've been on the Recreation Commission, and I was actually a member of the CPA committee when it first uh, passed. 
uh, back in the day when I was a member of the Recreation Commission. I represented the commission on the CPA committee. So I've been around. I taught at Northampton High School for a couple of years. Uh, my wife recently retired from uh, the school system where she worked in, in guidance. I was also a member of the ACLU. I used the word was instead of is because Bill Newman is here and I don't think I paid my dues this year, so <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble. And I work as a management sponsor for, sponsor for the um, LGBTQ business organization, which promotes education and mentoring of people who self-identify in non-traditional lifestyles. I'm proud to be able to help and represent uh, that organization. But I'm here to tell you that I am not in favor of this override uh, this year. I have supported every override in the past, but not this year. I'm, uh, <coughs> in terms of taxes, I pay excise tax, I pay real estate tax, I pay the CPA, I'll call it a tax. The water tax, the sewer tax, stormwater drainage tax, state tax, Medicare tax, Massachusetts paid family leave tax, which is new, by the way. I uh, was just enacted last month. I have no choice, but I have to pay into that. And I also have to pay into the Massachusetts paid medical leave tax, which is also new and came across with the one I just talked about. I pay a Medicare surtax, and I also pay the Massachusetts sales tax. So I pay a total of 12 taxes. Uh, that's a lot. I'm, I'm not alone, I know. In addition, you know, to, to the 12 taxes, of course, we get tax for meals tax, we have gasoline tax, and we probably don't get It's not three minutes yet, is it? What's that? It's not three minutes yet, is it? <laughs> well, you want to, like, fin finish your thoughts. <laughs> okay. It's, yeah. Well, anyways, I'm here to tell you that uh, the reason I'm not for the override is not because of all the taxes that I pay. It's because I'm not convinced that the city has done a lot to eliminate waste and increase efficiency. Part of my job I travel the world. I travel to Europe. I travel to Southeast Asia. And my job is to help identify organizations' uh, waste and help them and recommend to them how to eliminate that waste in order to reduce costs. So I'm not convinced that we have an income problem. I'm leaning on the side that we have a spending problem because I'm not aware of any activities around continuous improvement in terms of our organizations. I will offer you my service free of charge if you so desire, to help with any organization that would like me to come in as an alternate set of eyes and suggests what, where I see waste. Oftentimes I find in organizations that they don't see waste, they're too paradigmed, uh, and they don't look outside their own, their own benefit. So unless I'm convinced that uh, we have done what we can to eliminate waste within the city organizations, and there are, uh, I'm not going to support the override. It, it's as simple as that. So thank you very much. Thank have you. Have a great night. And again, thank you, counselors, for your service. Good to have a good evening. Thank, thank you for your comments. We appreciate <clears throat> it. Joel Feldman. <clears throat> Mr. Feldman. Hi, Joel Feldman, Columbus Avenue in Northampton. Um, I'm t uh, speaking <clears throat> in favor of you putting the override on the ballot. I want to remind ourselves that right now we're not voting for or against the override. We're voting to put it on the ballot. And the reason that makes a big difference is we're being put in a situation like every city and town in Massachusetts where we are not, uh, we don't have a fair ta income tax system in Massachusetts. The millionaire's tax that was supposed to be put on a year or two ago was found to, uh, to not be done properly. So we don't have that money available to us. And we're not allowed to raise our own money. We're not allowed to have our own income tax. I'm not sure that's a good or a bad idea. But we are left with essentially the property tax to fund our services. My three kids went through the Northampton Public Schools. They were born in Northampton. They had great teachers. They had great schools. They got to drive on pretty good roads. Um, and I think that we all, um, we all have an obligation to continue that. Um, I encourage everybody to look at Mayor Narkowitz's budget presentation, which is online. If you think that there's a lot of money out there that's being used wrongly, I would disagree with that. And I really, really want to encourage you, given that it's, um, it's our town, give us the opportunity to vote yes or no on the override and put it on the ballot. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Michael Quinlan. Councilor-elect from Ward 1. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to speak. Uh, I just wanted to address the five councilors 
for whom this is their last meeting, and thank you very much for your service, specifically uh, Councillor Carney, whose uh, considerable shoes I'll attempt to fill after the first of the year. We've lived in your ward your entire uh, run here as the counselor, and I'm grateful for your service and grateful to all of you. And the other four, I'm looking forward to spending more time with you, getting to know you and working with you. And I appreciate it all. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank, thank you, Michael. Rachel Mowry, the counselor elect from Ward 7. Welcome. Yeah, just like Michael, hi. I uh, just wanted to take this a brief moment in, in the middle of all this very important business to, to give some love to our outgoing city councilors, uh, Councilor Bidwell, Councilor Carney, Councilor Murphy, Councilor O'Donnell, and Councilor Klein. Um, you know, now that I have, um, you've all served multiple terms. Um, that's pretty amazing. And now that I've begun the process myself of becoming a city councilor, I see the hard work, the dedication it takes, and the way you have all put yourself out there out of love for your community. You are deeply appreciated. I just want to give some special thanks to my own ward counselor, Councillor Klein, to say as your constituent that I have felt well, well represented would be an understatement. Your leadership has been extraordinary. You have carried out your position thoughtfully and with compassion, integrity, and courage. You will be sorely missed. I, I wish you all the very, very best. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Here, here, Councillor Klein. You, know, you don't get comp time. Most of the new councillors have been at every meeting so far, even though you're not elected yet. Um, but that means you come in with greater experience, so thank you for doing that. Now, is there anyone who has not spoken uh, and has not signed up, but nonetheless would like to speak? I, okay, I saw a hand there, and then we'll go over there. So, sure. <coughs> it's okay. No, well, everyone will come up eventually, so yes, please. I'll give your name and the floor is yours. Hi, my name is uh, Marissa Elkins. I uh, live in Ward 2, uh, Washington Ave. Um, and I am here to speak tonight in favor of, uh, to ask you all to put the override uh, on the ballot. I am also co-chair of the vote yes, uh, the yes Northampton uh, um, uh, campaign and uh, co-chair with Mary Hoverman. <coughs> um, and I just want to take a moment to say and echo when people said, we just want an opportunity to go out and to advocate and to convince our neighbors and our community that, that we should have this opportunity to, um, to raise these funds, to continue the outstanding um, fiscal management um, that this city has exhibited over the last six years, extending what was supposed to have been a four-year um, period of time to um, six years, I think it... <laughs> but who's counting uh, a seven year um, period of time and and in a period of time in which we had growth where we worked together um, between government and community and the residents um, and nonprofit organizations all to prioritize what our needs and our wants and the things that we wanted to accomplish for the city um, and I think that I don't see waste I see I see priorities I see uh, people working together to identify what we need um, and we need this override, um, and we want the opportunity. And I want you all to know that we stand ready, uh, Yes Northampton stands ready to get to work, to canvas, to tell our neighbors about uh, what, this, what this is about and why we, we need to pass uh, this override. And so, of course, the first step is getting it on the ballot. Um, and I think I probably have 30 seconds left, so I, and I, as long as I'm here, um, I would also echo uh, Bill's um, statements of, Please, facial recognition uh, is is uh, no bueno. Uh, please, uh, please uh, pass that bill. Thank you very much. So now we had someone who originally raised their hand there. That's Ms. Moulton. No, no, it's fine. I'm not trying to engender any rivalry in the that <coughs> section of the audience. And then we're going to kind of go around like this and get up there. So, welcome. My name is Sharon Moulton. I live at 48. Evergreen Road in Ward 7, but I lived for 31 years at 34 Perkins Avenue. Um, uh, and so two of my counselors, I, I thank all of the retiring counselors, but two of, 
you two were the only, I guess I knew you a little bit, <laughs> but you're the two main ones that I've known as my counselors, and I want to thank you very much for your years of service, and in, 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 in I will miss you. And thank you for the to the other counselors who are retiring, and especially we'll always feel connection with Ryan because we share a birthday. Groundhogs. And <laughs> he just, when, just when I retired, he came on when I could get wrapped up in doing stuff. I wasn't always the public, but now I am. And I, I also want to say that I am a, still a member of ACLU, and so I hope that you pass that ordinance and that I'm, I congratulated you when you voted at the last meeting to put the override on the ballot, and I think we're going to have to find ways to raise more money because fighting climate disaster is going to cost money. Thank you. Thank you very much. Keep hearing I'm retiring. It sounds really nice. So I'm going to be on like a, a tropical island somewhere wearing Crocs or something. All right. So let's see. All right. We're done with this list. So now we're proceeding towards this area. Yes, please. Come on up. The floor is yours. Hi, my name is Terry Bernstein. I live in one ward in one ward one B. Uh, my comments will be extremely brief. I came to um, register my support for the facial recognition ban. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And uh, so, yeah, I see another hand nearby. Hi, my name is Joshua Newman. I live in, um, <laughs> I live in uh, 29 Jackson Street. Um, there are two things. Uh, the first is that I was a student of artificial intelligence when I went to Hampshire College. And when you see the kinds of failures that artificial intelligence make, it's hilarious. It is so funny. But that's not what you want for criminal evidence. It's, the comedy is not the same genre. And um, the amount that it gets wrong, as, as Bill said, the amount that it gets wrong is as terrifying as the amount that it gets right. It is not a technology that works. It is a technology that uh, enshrines existing bias. Uh, and we've seen that over and over and over again. And it's something that is baked into a lot of that core code and the core assumptions. And we don't want to be subject to that. We don't want to subject our fellows to that. Uh, and the other, the other one is that the override that we're talking about is because we have uh, hoarders who are taking our property and sitting on it, and then we don't know how to charge property tax for it. So it would be great if uh, the people who are hollowing out our downtown could be made to pay their part so our city can operate. I live here because it's beautiful and it's wonderful. And I don't want people messing that up because th they like putting things on their portfolio. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, who's next? Yes, sir. And then we'll go back over here. Um, my name is Jacob Dukowski. I live uh, on Fox Farms Road in Florence. Um, this is the first time I've ever been to a uh, city council meeting. Um, and uh, I was, uh, the reason I came was because of the override. Um, uh, the one thing I just, I, I support the override. The, the one thing I just want to add that I feel like anyone has mentioned yet is that um, Proposition 2.5 was passed when I was an infant. Um, now I'm obviously a grown man. I have three kids. Um, and uh, I think the, the intention of it, why 2.5%, as far as I can tell, is because inflation is 3%, uh, so it's less than that. I think the intention is to bleed government. It's by, it was enacted by people who don't like government. And it was designed to make it difficult to override, to make us have to fight each other to override. In a lot of different places, uh, you know, the city government is just allowed to set their own tax rates. They're elected. That's democracy. 
Um, so I think that, you know, until we could get rid of Proposition 2 and a half, we just need to understand that this is just regular government. It's just by a sort of insidious means uh, that's foisted upon us by the ghosts of a time when Massachusetts voted for Ronald Reagan. Um, that's all. Yeah. Thank you. Interesting. Um, so now I saw this hand. Yes, come on up. The council elect from Ward 2. I'm telling you, they're all here. <laughs> they're everywhere. Yes. I was in the quiet corner gathering my thoughts. Um, but I just wanted to add my voice in support of putting the override on the ballot. Um, you know, I recognize that the services Northampton provides, they cost money. We need to pay for it. I know it's a very difficult conversation, but I'm glad that we'll have to have the next few months to have that conversation. I think that's important. Um, and also, I wanted to echo the kind words toward our outgoing city councilors. If you are retiring to a tropical island, I'd like to come, but I think you're just outgoing. Um, it sounds great. And, and something that I think is, is worth noting is the number of hands that have been extended down uh, to welcome me and, and I believe my colleagues who are coming on to council as well. Um, an extra shout out on that to Dennis and Ward 2. Um, way back when, many months ago, we had a conversation and I thanked him for the information and insights he was providing. And he said to me, look, I, I want to be well represented. And um, you know that, that attitude of wanting to see government work, city council work, people have the information they need. Um, and, and feel welcomed and part of it is, is something pretty special. Um, and I'm really grateful to, to that, and not just Dennis, but um, many people have offered advice, um, coffee, um, you know, opportunities to chat, and, and it means a lot to me. So thank you all for your service, um, and you know, thanks. Thank you, thank you for those kind words. Anyone else? Yes, sir. <coughs> My name is Peter Walsh, and I'm a uh, consultant for uh, National Grid, and I apologize for being late. Uh, traffic was off on the pike. Uh, You're not late. I'm not late. Okay, I just, Are you here I for just the hearing? want to see, because the uh, thing was at 7.05, so I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss it. You didn't miss it, okay. so you can talk now and then if yeah. you want, oh, okay. or you can wait. It's okay. You're sure. not Lisa. Oh, Lisa. I <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm here because of um, poll petitioning plan yeah. and on, on uh, Hatfield. Do you want to wait for the hearing itself, or would you want to? It's up to you, totally up to you. No, uh, I'll wait. Yeah, it's uh, okay. <laughs> I just didn't want to make sure they missed it. Now that we know you're late, though, I don't know. After <laughs> I should have slipped in. Three-hour drive. So I, yeah, I appreciate that. Okay. Um, anyone else like to comment on any subject? Mr. Jarrett, yes. Councilor elect from Ward Five. <laughs> We're all here. You're a, you're a quorum. You're an unofficial quorum almost. So. Uh, first, wanted to thank you all for your service, and I met with most of you, or debated with some of you, and uh, it, that it's been so great to learn, and I'm so looking forward to uh, be, man, being sworn in in a few weeks. And I wanted to leave you all with a moment of uh, a few minutes of levity um, about still a serious topic. I wrote a song about a city ordinance, ch uh, chapter 128, section 13. You all know what that is. Yeah. It's a, ban, it's a ban on street performance. So. Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> uh, responsibility for and removal of canine waste. So here we go. Dog owners must remove and dispose of the canine feces. Dog owners must remove and dispose of the canine feces. Canine feces, come on, don't contaminate the groundwater. Canine feces, come on, let's entomb in a landfill. Canine feces, come on, why can't we just compost? Dog owners must remove and dispose of the canine feces. Dog owners must remove and dispose of the canine feces. Uh, I promise I won't sing directly to you, you know, this is my last chance. Um, so d yes, dog waste can be safely composted. Um, there is this handy booklet from the USDA that wow. describes about composting dog waste. So perhaps we could uh, not contaminate the groundwater and not entomb it in a landfill. 
Um, it tends to only be practical with the concentration of dogs in one place. These are Alaskan sled dogs, but I wonder if we could do something at the, the head trailheads and such. We'll see. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh. In six years, that's the first time I've been serenaded by a public. I know. <laughs> it's going to be an interesting session. What do, what do the other ones play? Does anyone play bass? <laughs> you know, do you tamper? It doesn't count. <laughs> All right. Uh, so now, any other comments or compositions or interpret <laughs> dancing? Anything like that from anybody in any subject? Well, then it sounds like we are ready to convene the council. So that's what we're going to do. Thank you. <coughs> Again, we do not have our staff person, so you have to bear with me as I muddle through with the help of our, our vice president of the city council. Um, so let's see. Ryan, will you call the role of the council? Sure. Right, no problem, Ryan. I will. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Bidwell. Here. Councillor Carney. Present. Councillor Dwight. Here. Councillor <laughs> Klein. Here. Councillor Labarge. Present. Councilor Murphy. Here. Councilor Nash. Here. Councilor O'Donnell. Here. Councilor Shea. Here. Okay, so we are all here. We have a quorum and we are convened. Uh, the first item on our agenda is a public hearing. Uh, this is a public hearing on 19158 National Grid Verizon New England poll petition for Hatfield Street. This is petition number 1504-8741. In accordance with provisions of section 22, chapter 166 of the general laws, the public hearing will be held, is being held here on Thursday, December 19th, 2019, 7 to 5 p.m. in the City Council Chambers, 212 Main Street, Northampton, on the petition of uh, Vera, National Grid Verizon New England to erect poles and wires upon, along, under, or across one or more public ways. Uh, and this is Hatfield Street. Move to open the public hearing. Second. Okay, so as I said to the councilors in the beginning, people are going to have to talk as though they're speaking to a small child <laughs> when they make this kind of So, Councilor Dwight made the motion. The second was Councilor Bidwell. And Councilor Bidwell seconded it. Okay. So, you can, I'm just going to have to like work out a system as we go. Um, Who has an extra paper today? Yes. We've got agendas, are you kidding? Oh my god, they're coming at me from all Thank All right, so we will, like, between the two of us, we will have some kind of public record. So, the motion on the floor, all those in favor open the hearing, say aye. 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 Abstention. So the hearing is now open. Um, I guess let's start with proponents. We have National Grid, uh, Mr. Zinsky. I'm going to leave this hat for a lost and found. I think okay. that she left the baby's spot. Mm. Come on up, Peter. Uh, I'm Lisa Jasinski with National Grid, and Peter uh, Walsh is the, he was actually the designer for the job. He is a contractor for the company. Yep. So yep. he'll speak to the job. Thank you. you. Have any questions? The, the floor is do you want to present it and describe what you propose to start yeah, out? Yeah, uh, basically what the project is on Hatfield Street and North King Street, uh, Mass DOT is proposing uh, a lot of major renovations, primarily a roundabout at the Hatfield North King Street uh, intersection. Uh, North King Street is a state state controlled road, so uh, the state is responsible for maintaining the petitioning for all those old relocations, which aren't many, the most of them are largest replacements. But on Hatfield Street, we do have we do have three we did have three poles that had to be two brand new installs, one has to be relocated back. Um, so that's basically what it is. It's just three poles that are involved on Hatfield Street, pole 33, and then we have a new pole 41-50 and a new pole 42. It is a Thank you. Attached on the sketch. Okay. Now there was a concern. Uh, right. I know we got a letter from uh, DPW. DPW. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From the DPW. Yep. Orders mm -hmm. the conditions. All those conditions have been put onto our construction orders, so the crews know all about that. Okay. So those so are acceptable to you. Yep. Okay. The, the, the water, water line hasn't been uh, relocated. By the time we set the poles, it has to be hand dug. We have to notify you people. Call the DPW. Uh, 24 hours in advance, I believe. They have to be there to uh, witness the, uh, the installation of the pole so that, to ensure the integrity of the water line. Right, great. So we included all those in our construction sketches, and the crews, have, the crews will have that as well. Does anyone in the public want uh, to look at this map? There are copies floating around if you want to see it. Um, yeah, Can you have an extra copy of that? Mm -hmm. We'll pass I can always keep in mind. 
This is uh, in honor of Proposition Two and a Half. We're running the meeting like it's 1980. We don't have the technology that we have. Um, let me um, let me read the conditions into the record. Yep. Also for the benefit of the public, and then I'm going to call on any other member of the public who'd like to to talk. This is an order that will be voted on subsequently, probably directly afterwards. This is in the City Council, December 21st, 2019, upon the recommendation of uh, Council President Ryan R. O'Donnell, 19186, in order to approve the poll petition for Hatfield Street. Uh, whereas on October 17th, 2019, National Grid Verizon New England submitted to the Northampton City Council's Office poll petition 15048741, petition for joint or identical poll locations dated August 28th, 2019, uh, the petition to install one a J.O. poll on Hatfield Street, remove two J.O. poles on Hatfield Street, and relocate two J.O. poles on Hatfield Street. Beginning at the point approximately 100 feet southeast of the center line of North King Street, relocate P33 seven feet back, anchor and install new P4150 and P42, and remove old uh, P42. Uh, it's going to be a test on this later, so people should remember <laughs> Uh, but we're going to get to the relevant parts about the conditions up soon. So, uh, also, whereas the Northampton Department of Public Works, CBW, has reviewed the petition and determined that the proposed location of Pole 33 is directly above the existing water main on Hatfield Street, which is to be relocated as part, as part of Mass DOT's reconstruction of this area, and by memorandum from Felix Harvey to DPW Director Donald Scully, dated November 22, 2019, has requested that conditions be attached to any approval of the petition, and whereas the City Council wishes to approve the poll petition with conditions. Now, therefore, be it ordered, the City Council hereby, is, hereby approves the order for joint or identical poll petitions for the petition number I, I read with the following conditions. Uh, if the poll is to be set prior to the water main relocation, the following conditions must be met. Hand digging will be required to expose the existing water main and avoid mechanical damage to it. There must be five feet of separation between the proposed pole and anchor and the existing water main once uh, both the pole and anchor are set. A valid trench permit approved by the DPW must be in place before work commences. The DPW must receive at least 24 hour notice before work commences. Uh, a representative from the DPW water division must be on site for the excavation of pole 33 and its anchor to ensure no damage to the city's water main. Uh, there are no conflict, uh, conflicts, I suppose, for the other pole installations. The petition should be modified to reflect these requirements. So that conforms to your understanding yep. of your obligations. Yep, it does. Thank you. Uh, any other members of the public would like to speak? Yes, sir. Come on up and give your name and address for the record, please. My name is John Skibisky. And uh, uh, I live at 50 Hastings Heights in Florence. Uh, I got a notice in the mail that utility poles were going to be discussed at a meeting. And uh, I don't know where these poles are going to be, but I assume that they're going to be on my property or maybe near my property in some fashion. And I just handed this description here just moments ago, and I don't quite understand what it's <coughs> mean in relation to my property over here. No one has pointed anything out to me previously about telephone poles being installed or removed. I have driveways there proposed and in place. I don't know where these poles are going and how they will relate to my driveway over here. Uh, secondly, uh, secondly, uh, apparently the uh, proposal has to do with the roundabout. And the roundabout may still be in question because I am contesting the destruction of the prehistoric site that found artifacts there, some 9,000 years of age, that have not been completely uh, researched. 
If that is the case, it is possible that an alternative may have to be used for traffic mitigation at the end of Hatfield Street. The alternative was to use Hatfield Street the way it was with a traffic light. We'll have to see what, how this plays out. And so what I'm saying is that these plans that you may have this evening may have to be altered in some way. They will not be accurate if, if things play out in a different fashion. So I leave you with that message. You have on your agenda here tonight in order to approve the poll petition. And I would say that you're aware now that the situation could be much different than what is planned presently. Thank you. I ask you, thank you. And uh, so I, I just, I want to understand, is it not possible to determine from this map whether your property would be included in the area? It must be possible between you and uh, the representatives here to figure out whether it's something that's of a concern to you. Councilor well, Dwight has a, inc a parliamentary this, inquiry. I, I believe, actually, oh, I'm sorry, I believe uh, Mr. Skabiski's property is on the northwest side of this map as you're looking at it, um, as this is represented. In the, and I believe, and Lisa will confirm one way or the other, the, the uh, poles are on the opposite side of the street. Yes, yeah. Okay. So. so the poles are on the opposite side of the street from the property that you own. Apparently, from what I'm understanding. I, well, I really don't understand. But I have driveways there. Yeah. I'd like to know where those poles are. They're, they're removing some poles. They're putting some in. Uh, this lists uh, number 33. I don't see where 33 is mentioned here on, on this map here that's uh, handed out. And then it says back here, uh, poles, plural. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's kind of confusing to me, and I think that uh, uh, that's only part of the problem. But uh, since the hearing is today, I came in to make mention of the fact that there may have to be some revisions on your part in regards to this plan of pole installation or removal. So okay. I'll leave you with that message. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank um, you. Thank you. My. Um, Procedurally, you know, we have these hearings for this purpose. So, if the public wants to ask questions and if there is confusion, uh, there can be. Uh, Ms. Jasinski? Ms. Jasinski? Yes. I, 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 what I want to do is have a, at this be a public discussion as much as possible. Yes. So, I may call on you to say whatever you're saying publicly. So, I don't I want to have it twice. Excellent. Thank you. And so, I think that is the, the procedure. Um, the hearing is an opportunity for clarification if there is confusion. Perhaps we can, it would not be inappropriate if, Mr. Zinsky, you feel you can provide some clarity. If you think you can, um, I would invite you to come up and address uh, us and through me to Mr. Jasinski, and maybe you can describe some of it, if that's what you were doing. I'm only yeah, guessing. I was, I was describing, and, and Peter might be able to address this even, even better than I am. Yep. I actually brought along our construction sketches, okay. which, you know, the, the petition sketch simplifies it to, to kind of sum it up, and this gets a little bit clustered, but it shows on our construction sketch, you know, North King, where it comes down. It also shows the existing uh, pole line and how it gets moved along with the road for the roundabout. Yep. Now, this the, the poles that we're petitioning for are in the event that this roundabout takes place. So if, if Mr. Skabiski still has something pending um, with the roundabout itself, it, be kind, it becomes a moot point for us. So totally conditional on future construction? Right. on the roundabout. Uh, on the roundabout. And also, okay. just, just the, the, to relay to that gentleman, yes. pole 33 is right at the intersection of Cook Avenue. Okay. I don't want to stop you from displaying the map to Mr. Jasinski. Feel free to do that if you want. I will. I yep. will. Thank yeah. you. This kind, of, this kind of shows him in proximity. And I think that that's where I wanted, just, I wanted to clarify yep. with him that that's the property. Uh, what okay. he's concerned about. I, I thought it was. Yep. So. yep. That, that's very, if you would, you know, that would be great. All right. Um, and in the meantime, I'll ask if there's any questions from the council or any other members of the public. Just, yes, just you want to say please? Uh, you yeah. mentioned uh, about the uh, uh, findings that they found out there. There was a detailed study done. Mm -hmm. uh, I would recommend he goes into the uh, into, into uh, Google. Yep. Uh, 
out of the uh, Daily Hampshire Gazette. The town hired a company to do all this and they found nothing. They found remains of like, not bones or anything like that, but they consider the area to be vacant now. And it's not gonna be paved over or anything. That's at the intersection of North King Street and Hatfield Street. With regards to the artifacts? Yes. Or supposed yes. artifacts. And so the, the, the Mass town. Historic Commission and uh, doesn't have any interest in this. No one has made any kind of formal. There's a report right here. Yep. Okay. So just wanted to make them aware of that, that's all. And um, so what, what, we're, what we're doing is we're holding a hearing. The actual vote is going to be separate. Okay. So Councilor Dwight had, had an inquiry. So, um, if, if the roundabout does proceed, the important fact actually is, uh, as I understand it, based on what Lisa just presented, the polls will actually be moving farther away from Mr. Skibiski's property. Yes. They'll be moving towards the, towards the North King Street. Right, exactly. Headed towards Walmart, as it were. Correct. As opposed to way closer to his property, which is on the opposite side. Now, here again, the, the st I'm not sure where the state falls into this, but the state is responsible for staking out these poll locations. So the state is not? State. The, st the DOT is responsible for staking, actually putting a stake in the ground where the poles are going to go. Right. right. We, we, we met with them. We designed this based on what the recommendations are. But they ultimately will be staking out the locations eventually, whenever this project gets approved. But this describes a rough look. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. It, it yeah. gives a very good idea where it's going to go. Good. Um, and yeah. I just want to clarify. Go ahead. This, yes. this, 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 what you have in front of you is only for the three poles that we're responsible for on Hatfield Street. Yep. There are also many poles on North King Street that are being, mostly being replaced. Okay. So. What is the, oh, Councilor Dwight. It's just a point of order. Mm -hmm. So this would require us to amend to, uh, one comes sure. to a vote to add the conditions that the DPW have submitted in a letter, but uh, since we're approving the petition, I would assume that we have to amend that on. What I, what I have done is package everything ready to go in this right, so handy thing that on. I just read. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's even sponsored by me, I guess. All right, well, sounds good. So yeah, so it doesn't have, it's actually, it's not on the consent agenda, as these usually when they're non-controversial, they are. Right. So we're ready to go. Um, one more question, is there a time sensitivity about the approval I'm not sure where the state stands or what this, but I know they're looking to advertise this relatively soon. Yep. So they can't really advertise it until we get, first of all, they get the roundabout approved, mm -hmm. which I'm not sure where they stand with that approval, but also we got to get this, these poll petitions taken care of. Got it. And it's just those three polls, basically. Okay. okay. Um, any other, thank you. And any other questions from the council or public? Uh, so I'll do my due diligence, Mr. Zinsky and um, Mr. Skibitsky. Um, any, uh, any other comments you'd like to provide during the public <coughs> section of, of this? No, other than if someone has a question for me regarding my interests, uh, I'll be glad to answer. Okay. Uh, hearing none proposed. Okay. I, so. I will also leave him my number, yep. and if uh, we could, I could Okay. Um, as, long as, as long as you're aware of the fact that things could change there in regards to the roundabout, it may not happen, and yeah. whatever planning you make in votes may not apply. I just wanted you to know that. Okay, so it sounds like actually we're in some kind of harmony because, in fact, it, it's acknowledged by those proposing this that it's totally a conditional request. So if nothing is built, then it's sort of a moot point. So I guess my I, I don't see... I wouldn't see the issue for that uh, on that particular point that, that you raise, um, but nonetheless, an important point to raise. Now, uh, any other any other comments from the public or the council in the public hearing section? If not, we will probably proceed to close the hearing. Uh, move to close public. Second it. Okay. Councilor Dwight moves to close the hearing, and Councilor Labarge. Okay. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> And uh, so all those in favor of closing the hearing, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, any abstention? <clears throat> it is closed unanimously. Um, why don't we proceed to that order, um, which I have read already into the record. This is 19186.
in order to approve a poll petition for Hatfield Street. Move to approve. Second. Sec oh, so Councilor Dwight moves. Dwight and Um, any discussion on approval of the order? Under the council rules, only one vote is required, only one occasion of voting is required to approve an order of this kind. No discussion? All right. <laughs> we're going to see how this goes. So we're going to proceed to a roll call vote. <laughs> roll call, please. Yes, right away, sir. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Shara. Yes. Okay. So that order is approved um, unanimously. And let's see. Excuse me while I make notes. So I'm going to ask for conversation in the council chambers, which is no doubt helpful to have um, be, be brought to the lobby because it's an echoey chamber and it prevents some people from, uh, from hearing um, stuff. All right. So now we're going to proceed. Let's, um, let's do any, any one minute announcements from, from councilors. Good evening, Councilor Shara. Um, as has been noted, this uh, feels like an end of an era because it is an end of an era here. Um, so to the five councilors that are leaving, um, all of Northampton owes you a huge debt of gratitude for your years of service, your many, met some of you many years of service. Um, and few really know the time and the dedication and the work that you all have into your public service, but we can attest to it. Um, and I want to acknowledge it and, um, and give you my thanks and say that it has been, uh, I'm gonna get a little chipped up, um, a supreme honor to serve with all of you. Um, each of you has taught me personally so much and it's really hard to imagine doing this without you, so I say thank you. Um, and Councilor Dwight and I have- we have parting gifts. We have parting gifts. Yeah. For all our participants and contestants. <laughs> Is this the home version of the Northampton City Council? Well, this is something with which you can gaze on with dread. In, in the <laughs> oh. There we go. It's our oh. picture. Yay. Got to oh. take the rubber band off. So this is what you're up to. I know. It's valued under $50. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> less than zero. <laughs> <laughs> If you, if you receive this, you'll owe people money. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's, it's a class photo. It features the class president in the center looking actually like we just got an A. <laughs> I'm not sure I did, but okay. Nash is a yeah. profile. They come out Nash, good. Nash was, He's Jim a Nash did not participate. Yeah, Nash in profile. The, the other counselors did by okay. facing the camera. Did you Photoshop him in, or is that? I you? tried. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> it's my good side. <laughs> <laughs> they did. They come out good. <laughs> you did a good job, Bill. Yeah, so there will be the, the more expensive oh, frame goes to uh, uh, the council uh, chamber. Thank, thank you that's for enough. the thought. Yeah, you don't want to catch what I got. <laughs> Thank you very much. Any other any other presents? I mean, yes. Comments? Yes. yes. <laughs> Is this where we say nice thoughts? Unfortunately, yes. It's the time to say nice things. But oh, okay. I didn't see it on the agenda. I, I just that's never happened in Ward Three before. So feel free. <laughs> <laughs> Bam. <laughs> I, I just want to say what an honor it has been serving with all of you and, um, you know, to be going from, you know, I came in here as the rookie and I, I mean, it, the, the, the level of dedication and smarts going on on this, this, uh, this council have been uh, pretty awesome and uh, that I, I, we have a whole new crew coming in and, um, and I expect that you know, we have, a, we have a lot to live up to. This has, I, I feel like I've been part of a golden era 
and um, uh, I just want to thank all of you, the leaving counselors, and also the four staying. I know. The other three, thank you. <laughs> Councillor Labarge. Oh, and yes. Okay. Um, I just want to say, Councillor Carney, she's been a colleague of mine for quite a long time, and you will be missed dearly. But it's okay. You got a phone call. We'll be going out. Councillor Bidwell, I want to wish you the best of luck, and it was great working with you. We've had disagreements and so forth, but it was done in a very, very respectful way, and that's the way it should be. Councillor Klein, I will miss you dearly. Back and forth with each ward and that, but I know you will be visible, which I hope. And also Councillor Murphy, who also a colleague of ours for quite a long time. And I know you will be around. We'll see your face at City Hall and we know that you will participate quite a bit, and you're there to help us counselors when we ever need help. And I want to thank you for all the service that you have worked with me, Councillor Murphy, Councillor Dwight, the group of us. So, and I just wish that we didn't have all these counselors leaving because it, it's right there. And wish you the best of luck, all of you. And. Our council president, Ryan O'Donnell. Uh -huh. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Councilor Dwight. And I have to oh, say, and I have to say, thank you, thank you for doing such a great job as our council president. And I wish you also the best of luck in your future. Thank you. It was my honor. Um, Councilor Dwight. Um, I got elected, when I first got elected, uh, I was elected with Councilor LaBarge. So, um, and, and then I had the wisdom to leave at one point and then come back. Yeah. The fact is, is that I got to serve, as I was serving as a counselor, I got to know each of you before you became counselors, before you were stricken with this, this sickness that we all <laughs> suffer from, the, the, the devotion to public service. I dealt with you, I, I, actually, Councilor Murphy was one of the first persons I dealt with right when I first got elected. And he explained to me why I, why I was, I was wrong about something, um, and then had the had the distinct pleasure of watching you make this ill-chosen choice to become part of the uh, be part of this deliberative body, Ill and you've choice. shown what the value of a deliberative body is. You, um, you know, I've I've been part of very contentious, uh, low-functioning councils. I won't name which ones, but um, this one is the highest functioning council that I've had the privilege to work with. And that, uh, and what accounts for that is the majority that are currently leaving now, this whole section of the room is stepping out. Um, See what you My doing. first, actually my first meeting with um, Councilor Klein was working on Claire Higgins' first council campaign. Yeah. 1991? Yes, yeah, right. That was a, it was a long, long time 92. ago. It was a long time ago. <laughs> Council O'Donnell came and approached me to lobby for a constitutional amendment uh, uh, in response to Citizens United. I was, I was actually, I, I think you were 14 or something. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I was actually, the depth and breadth of your perception of your your grasp of governance, which has been proven over and over again, was breathtaking. And uh, you know, I, I in, in fact, actually, I felt like a false president when I served as president because I felt the genuine president <coughs> sat right here. Uh, so we traded places. Councilor Carney mm. uh, was kind enough to. Um, be solicited by me when I was leaving to consider running to replace me. Um, and the reason that I thought that uh, Maureen would be ideal is because of her ability to empathize and her very strong convictions and moral core. 
she and I subscribe to many things of the same. I think um, most of us all um, lobby for, which is essentially protection of the people who don't mm -hmm. normally receive protections <laughs> or the people who might be overlooked when considering protections. And she never disappointed. In fact, actually, I know Councilor Carney uh, took a lot of heat at one point when standing up for the, uh, not for the porn store, but for the right to protect uh, individual liberties and speech and, and, to, and you know, to actually abide by the Constitution. And she took a lot of heat for that. She made a very principled stand. D despite, I imagine, her own personal revulsion to the, to the, <laughs> to the business itself. Councilor Bidwell and I, uh, National Priorities Project, of course, he was on the board there. And um, at one point they actually, and they never repeated this mistake, invited me to host one of their events. Very thoughtful and considerate afterwards. I think actually when Congressman John Olver, well, this is the, when Congressman John Olver took over at one point when inter, when we were supposed to introduce Barney Frank. I don't know if you recall that when that was. Uh, I was there. Yeah, um, that was interesting. But you were very kind and very gracious, and in fact, actually, at the time, you were chairing a program that actually has sustaining value here in this community and also in the nation. And. Actually, we need a national priorities project more than ever, although apparently facts really have little to do with anything, but I appreciate your devotion to them. And Council Murphy was part of the warp and weave of Northampton with an historic memory and a sense of context that uh, is indisputable. And on top of which, he also had the privilege to go bopping around the world with a microphone, I never could figure that out. Right? That's because you knew Chip, I guess, right? Was that it? You, got, you had an inside line on basically. He's, he's going to the Olympics, by the way, in Tokyo. I don't know. He, that's why he doesn't seem too upset with the prospect that he won't be returning to this house chamber. I'll make the best of it. I'm, I figured you would. So I am, like my colleagues, grateful, and bitter, this is bittersweet. I actually. I know that when I left, I felt elation, and then about 15 hours later felt regret. And um, I suspect you will too at some point. Every counselor who's ever left here, by the way, and this should be noted, has all said, oh, you haven't gotten rid of me, I'll be back. Not a one of them's come back with the exception of Mike Kirby. Yeah, you're right, you're right. <laughs> and, and I did come back. I didn't yes, come you back. did. Uh, no, but I mean, come back to speak. He had one tonight. Pam Schwartz. Yeah. Pam Schwartz. Pam Schwartz. Pam Schwartz. That's true. I'm sorry. Pam's not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Pam has come back, but for the most part, I mean, everyone says I'm never. You know, I'll be back. Don't you worry. I'm going to be doing this. I'll, you'll be hearing from me. Um, that may or may not be true. I hope it is true. Actually, <laughs> I mean, we. I think we do need to hear from you. Um, your, you guys have served as touchstones. I, the debates that we've had have been valuable, constructive. Even the heated debates have had significant value. Honestly, I thought those were our best moments during the hot debates. So thank you. I'll just leave it at that. Enjoy your pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Any other member of the council? Mm. Like to wax poetic on any. Go ahead. Yes. Is, um, I think Laura played one last joke on all of you. For some reason, many of the name plates are mixed. Um, so, Elisa and Jim, <laughs> can you guys? Yeah. I'm so oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> Does this mean we need to start? Oh, well, over? it's the name game. <laughs> you will be getting your plates, by the way. You don't get to keep the little wooden triangle, but you will get your name plates. Oh. <laughs> Anyone else? Councilor Bidwell. Well, if, if, if this is also the time for those of us departing, uh, or at least in my case, I'd like to say a, a little bit of something. Um, Councilor Nash observed he was a rookie when he came on. Well, when I was elected and came on four years ago, I was, I was, I was the only newbie. Um, yep. Yep. And so on, on the one hand, I had 
eight, uh, eight colleagues with considerable experience to, to, to learn from. Uh, on the other hand, it was, I, I was the rookie class, but you all made me feel quite welcome, and I very quickly uh, uh, felt uh, embraced and part of the process, and it's been an honor to serve all along. And it's been a real honor to be part of, of, uh, of city government. It's, uh, it'll be one of, the, uh, one of the honors of my life. Um, there have been so many things that I've appreciated about this opportunity to serve, and at the top of the list is the really intelligent conversation that's, that we have had amongst us. As Councillor Dwight was suggesting, there have been heated moments, but um, the sincerity and the conviction and the dedication and the smartness of my colleagues has always been there, woven, woven throughout. Uh, it's also been a real privilege for me to work with uh, and in partnership with our excellent mayor. Uh, the department heads that I've had an opportunity to work with have been, without exception, <clears throat> outstanding. Uh, and rank and file, the, the men and women who, who serve in the city government are uh, tremendous public servants, tremendous city employees, and it's been a real privilege to get to know them. My compliments to the mayor for the hundreds of good hires that he's been responsible for. Um, I think we are very well served by, <clears throat> by our city government. Um, I've also been tremendously impressed, sitting on city services especially, where we see uh, and have a chance to talk with all of those who have been appointed to boards and committees and commissions, the caliber of the people who step up uh, and give of their time in the city is just extraordinary. It's really been heartening to see these people with unbelievable credentials and resumes <clears throat> who have arrived at a point in their lives, young and old, where they want to serve. And it's been really heartening and it's been a tremendous window into what this community is about. To, to see these people uh, step up and, and, and want to serve. And serving on council has also provided a, a, a different vantage point for looking at the role of nonprofit organizations in our community. And it's something that I've always been strongly connected to, but to see it from this vantage point and to understand the role of these organizations in the social services and compassionate side of, the organ of, of our city and in the arts part of our city, and in the athletic parts of our city. Um, they are so much a part of the quality of life that continues to attract people to our, uh, to our community. And the, the vantage point of, that you have as a counselor to see all that has been, uh, has been really, really wonderful. And of course, the passion and excitement and intelligence of the advocates and the activists who appear meeting by meeting and share with us what they know, what they care about, what they see as the things that are right and that are wrong about the city, uh, that keep us on our toes all along. It's been a, uh, that's been a tremendous part of the experience. So, so you take all that together, and Northampton really gives me hope. Uh, when, I, when I look at the sometimes bleak national scene, uh, to be part of something like what we have going here in Northampton is, it really is quite hopeful, and knowing despite the fact that we indulge in a sense of exceptionalism once in a while, that there really are uh, hundreds and thousands of these communities out there doing the right thing, trying to, trying to make the right decisions as, as, as we have done. So it, is, it has been an honor um, to, my, uh, to those of you who are along with me departing. Um, I suspect, like me, uh, we're not going anywhere uh, if, if there are if folks want my help, they'll have it. If they want my, they'll have my support. <coughs> whether whether you remaining folks on the council uh, want my help or not, you've got my support. I'm here to help. I'm here to, I'm here to advocate. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, I'll be I'll be I'll be sticking around. Uh, and for those of you um, who will continue to have the privilege of serving, uh, I wish you the best of luck, and encourage you to savor this uh, opportunity to serve as I have. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Anyone else like to speak? Um, I'm gonna. I, I will also say something um, because it's it's been my honor to serve as as council president for the last two years. Thank you again for that for that honor. 
and for your, your, your confidence. Um, it's funny, to be honest. Um, first of all, when I was describing the placement of polls on Hatfield Street, I saw the five new incoming members with this ashen look on their face, like, <laughs> I've made a huge mistake. Um, and Councilor Dwight, as is his custom, spoke um, eloquently, but also in a funny way about, you know, it's, is, this a, is this an affliction we have being on the city council? I know he doesn't mean it because I know he and uh, all my colleagues actually are the, the, the people who most in my life I, I've known to truly care about public service. And, um, it, you know, I want it to not go unsaid that, you know, Councilor Bidwell's four years in the council, Councilor Klein six, Councilor Murphy's 14, Councilor <laughs> Klein is 14, um, if you add my six to that, what is that? I'm a politician, not a mathematician. I think it's 44 years. Um, that's a long time, especially for the counselors for Ward 1 and, and Ward 5, to invest. And it is, it is, time, it is work. Um, you know, it, the work that happens happens between meetings, doesn't it, when you hear from your constituents. And um, what I think is that the, the service that has been exemplified by my colleagues. Um, a lot of things are not durable. Um, you know, uh, uh, things change and um, uh, disappear. Uh, but, you know, what you do for uh, your community really doesn't disappear. It can be kind of forgotten, it can be changed in people's minds, but when you pass an ordinance, it exists as, as words and law. When you write a resolution that has meaning to people, it matters um, to real people's lives. And what my colleagues have done, um, I think, is seriously not just help preserve the, the physical streets and sidewalks and neighborhoods of the city, although you've done that with diligence. You've uh, fought for our, our principles and the things that equally make Northampton what it is. And uh, it's just been an honor to serve with all of you um, I grew up in a, a, a nearby town. I didn't grow up in Northampton, but I've been in, in and out of Northampton my, my whole life. And I just, you know, I don't know where I'm going with this, because actually when I, when I thought about what I'm going to say, I said, you got you to say something. You have to provide some kind of valediction. I'm probably going go, to go after Bill Dwight and uh, <laughs> Shara and the other uh, great orator. You know, and then I hear everyone else um, provide equally oh, moving, moving speeches. How are you going to follow it? So I really don't know. But I'll tell you, you know, uh, until I, I, I made Northampton my home, honest to God, I never really felt uh, I had any sense of uh, community. And it's not through politics, it's just through the city and being involved and seeing people uh, where I live that I, I felt that for the very first time in my life. And, uh, you know, uh, then getting to serve in a public role, you feel not just so you know these people and that you respect them as members of your community, but uh, that you know you have their back and they have yours. And that may change and fluctuate over time, but what doesn't change is, is, is the feeling and the commitment that I think everyone here has uh, to making this, uh, the city just better. Mm -hmm. And I think everyone's done that. It's just, I've been really impressed with that and I've learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've learned a lot from, uh -huh. uh, from all of you. And anyway, I've appreciated everyone. Um, it's been my honor to, to serve with, with all of you. So thank you. Okay? Thanks. So that takes care of the speeches. Now let's go on with our disagreements and get into <laughs> a fight or something. Coming up. <laughs> oh, one more thing. Sorry. Our uh, council office staff, Laura Crutzler, who was, was mentioned, uh, deserve rec deserves recognition. You see what a disaster ensues when she's not here. Uh, but she actually has done a really great job as, as a staff person. And so she deserves to be recognized for all her work because obviously everything collapses without her. So I, I just like, she's not here today, but I'd like to offer that, that thanks to her. Right. And best of luck to the incoming counselors as well. <coughs> now, we have, what do we have here? Mr. Mayor, do you have any 
Thank you. Mr. Mayor, do you have any com uh, communications this evening? Um, no, just my only communication is just to um, sort of publicly thank the five outgoing members of the City Council. Um, uh, just sort of join the join the chorus of the, of the City Council and just to say what an honor it's been to serve with each one of you. Um, and thank you on behalf of the residents of Northampton for your service to our city. Um, have to have to give an extra shout out to Councillor uh, Murphy and Councillor Carney. Um, you mentioned their 14 years of service. Well, it was 14 years ago that I was one of the three new elected councillors with them. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so we sort of came in together, the three of us. So it's, um, you know, extra special to, to say goodbye to you and to thank you especially for your being colleagues and also for your long service to the city. So congratulations to you all. And, uh, and I hope that you will stay engaged in city government. I have lots of appointment opportunities if you're looking uh, for a better way to spend your Thursday night. Uh, you know, planning board, we've got some <coughs> openings, et cetera. So, uh, but I know you will all stay engaged because I know those, that's the kind of people that you are because you care so deeply about the city. So thank you again, congratulations. Thank you those kind words. Um, no resolutions this evening, no presentations. Either matter of the consent agenda, which contains the following items. First, the minutes of December 5th, 2019, <clears throat> and 19191 appointment to, uh, to the Board of Registrars, which would be the equivalent of referring it to City Services, is the question of the appointment uh, to the Board of Registrars of Catherine K of uh, 136 South Main Street in Florence for a term April 2019 to March 2022. Any removals from the consent agenda this evening? Hearing no removals, a motion to approve the second consent up. agenda. Second. Councilor Dwight and seconded by? Second. I did, yes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All those in favor of approval say aye. 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 Any abstentions, so that is approved mm -hmm. unanimously. This time we will <coughs> rec uh, recess for the committee on finance. Mm -hmm. And hopefully my voice will make it through this. No, no long speeches for me tonight. Uh, I do for the first time, though, get to read the roll, and I assure you that I, in fact, am here. Councilor Carney, you're Present. you're here. Uh, Councilor Labarge, you're Present. here. And Councilor uh, Jean Louise, you're you're somewhere here. You're moving around, but you're here. All right. The first thing is approval of minutes from our previous meeting, December fifth. Do we have a motion? Second. Second. Uh, Councilor Carney and Councilor. Uh, okay. Councilor Labarge. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. First financial order is 19177, an order to execute a contract amendment relative to the FY 2020 audit. Um, upon the recommendation of Council President Ryan O'Donnell, uh, whereas the City Council voted on September 5th, 2019 to award the contract for the FY 2020 independent audit to Scanlon Associates, LLC. Now, therefore, it be ordered that the City Council hereby authorizes its members to sign the standard contract amendment number two as attached here to amending the previous contract, which was 131-16 between Scanlon Associates, LLC, and the City of Northampton to read as follows. The contract is extended for one year um, at prices and rates quoted for the FY 2018 audit with the possible increase not to exceed $1,000 for services related to new Gadsby standards which take effect in 2020. Do we have a motion in finance? Second. 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 Okay. Um, discussion. I think the council president has some discussion. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so, one second. Uh, yeah, uh, we have to award a contract for independent audit every year. Uh, by roughly September. This was done in September. Um, and now I have before me a contract to actually effectuate that award. Um, what we did not do is have the, uh, in, that, in that original award, we didn't have the, the dollar amount. So as far as I'm concerned, the award was done properly. Um, and although I'm informed by both our finance director and city solicitor that I could just go ahead and sign the contract now. It has always been my practice to have the council uh, in a tr as transparent a way as, po as possible, I uh, express its opinion before we do something like sign a contract of this kind. So the purpose of this is merely to get the council on record um, saying it's okay to go ahead and execute the contract. Okay. And uh, after talking to the solicitor today, I just have one modification. I would uh, <coughs> like someone in finance to move for an amendment, if, if you wouldn't mind. And so I would, I would request someone make a motion that finance to amend it such that the, the first sentence read, so 
So it's now therefore be it ordered. It would say that the city council hereby authorizes the city council president to sign and then add on behalf of the full city council standard contract amendment number two, et cetera, and the rest would be un unchanged. In other words, rather than getting everyone's signatures, my signature will just effectuate the entire thing. Uh, so that's what I would ask be considered in finance. Does one of the finance committee members want to move that amendment? Um, second. Shall I read it again? Just a procedural question. Are we allowed in finance to actually amend or do we need to do signature. that on the floor of the full council Perfectly. when it comes before us? Perfectly just in order to do it uh, in finance. I spoke to the and solicitor. Then I will move that amendment, please. Second. Second. Um, so, so again, just so everyone understands the amendment, the first sentence would read, that uh, now therefore it be ordered that the city council hereby authorizes the city council president to sign on behalf of the full city council standard contract amendment number two as attached here to uh, amending the previous contract 13116 between Scanlon Associates LLC and the city of Northampton to read as follows, quote, the contract is extended for one year at the prices and rates quoted for the fiscal year 2018 audit with a possible increase not to exceed $1,000 for services related to new GASB standards, which take effect in fiscal year 2020. But I guess the motion would just be whatever is needed to mm -hmm. amend. Mm -hmm. So thank you. All right. Um, any more discussion about that amendment? Then all in favor of the amendment, please say aye. 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 Mm -hmm. So any more discussion about the amended motion? Hearing none, then all in favor of the motion as amended, please say aye. Aye. In finance, positive recommendation. All right, very good. Thank you. Uh, the next one um, is 19189, an order to accept a gift of a thermograph imager uh, from the Massachusetts Interlocal Insurance Agency. Um, on the recommendation of the mayor, order that the city of Northampton accepts the donation of a thermograph imager valued at $2,000 per device from the Massachusetts Interlocal Insurance Agency to be used to identify areas of heat loss, moisture, and infestation in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A. Do we have a motion to finance? Make a motion. Second. 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 We got those? Yeah. All right. And the mayor's here to talk to us about the imager. So, uh, counselors, this was actually a safety grant that we applied for through uh, Maya, as they're as they're known, um, which is our liability insurance provider. Um, and we had expected it would just be a cash grant to buy one of these thermal imagers, actually for our facilities uh, staff to be able to have to be able to you know do this kind of work in terms of looking for heat loss, looking for moisture, um, and then other sorts of issues going on behind the walls uh, that they want to look at. Um, very recently, since, since your last meeting, um, they actually changed the nature of the grant to say that instead of giving you cash to buy a thermo imager, we're actually going to just give you the thermo imager. Um, so that changes it from a grant into a sort of a gift of real property. So that's why we've come to you to just ask if you will authorize us to accept this uh, $2,000 uh, uh, thermograph imager from uh, Maya. Um, and. We, because it's a gift of real property, it needs to be accepted by the city council. Mm -hmm. Questions for the mayor about the yes. thermal imager, Council Labarge. Mayor, um, this thermograph imager, is this something that we had received once before because of that terrible fire in Worcester and firemen had died? Is this the same? It's a little bit different. Um, we do, there. there is thermo imaging that is used um, by our, by our fire rescue folks, uh, you know, to try to look for, uh, be able to see if there's a fire happening in walls, et cetera. Um, that's, this is a little bit different. Um, this would be more something that, um, uh, you know, um, contractors would use frequently, even when we're doing um, um, audits of people's homes to be able to look and see if there's heat loss or insulation or other kinds of issues happening. Um, it basically detects heat. Um, but it's not really designed at the level of the sort of emergency type that would be used. Um, this is going to be used more for facilities. Um, and again, it's, you know, um, Maya is a liability company, and so they like to provide grants to their customers to incentivize avoiding loss in property and safety and other things like that. Um, we actually got another grant. This was actually for, for cash um, to get some ergonomic um, furniture for staff 
is again trying to um, take care of uh, workers and not and not have injuries, uh, workplace related injuries. We've gotten grants for buying all kinds of things again related to workplace safety. So this is one that the um, they ma made available to uh, to municipalities, and so that's what it's for. I think Smith College didn't they donate of what had occurred in Worcester? I remember that way back. Yeah, I, I don't recall, but it's quite possible. Yeah, I don't recall specifically. And you are you requesting two readings on I this? I am, yes. And as I said, um, initially, uh, we just learned that this was swapping from a grant to an actual gift of a device um, um, after your last meeting. So if possible, that would be great. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for the mayor? Okay, hearing none, then all in favor of positive recommendation in finance, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, and the last thing in finance is 19190, in order to authorize a five-year agreement for Card Connect services at the Senior Center. Order that, whereas the Senior Center wishes to implement on-site credit card processing for the convenience of the seniors, whereas a five-year contract is necessary uh, for a contract with Card Connect, the credit card processing software that is enabled to work with my senior center, the senior center's software program. Now, therefore, it be ordered that the senior services department is authorized to enter into a five-year contract for provision of credit card processing services. Do we have a motion to finance for that? Motion. Second. Second. And questions for the mayor on this? So my senior center is the proprietary software that the senior center has had for many years. It's what people use as a touch screen when they go, they can check in, they can swipe their membership, they can use it to sign up for classes and check into classes. Um, um, and it also helps the senior center track how many patrons are coming to the senior center, which they're required to report to the state. Um, they want to be able to offer the ability for people to pay for credit with a credit card um, now. Um, and so this is a, a, an add-on software um, and hardware to the uh, My Senior Center uh, software that'll allow them to do that. So they can you know, buy their uh, fitness class and use a credit card as opposed to having to pay with cash. Um, it'll also help us in terms of processing uh, those funds. Um, like many software uh, contracts, um, the, they have a, and because of the hardware involved, they have a minimum uh, five-year contract um, and so in order to sign a contract longer than three years, it requires city council approval. Um, you may remember when we went out to bid for the uh, ComPlus parking system, um, which is the handheld portable system that the, I had to come to you to get a contract, uh, to get authorization for a longer contract. We've had to do that with the schools. Um, and so this is basically invoking a chapter of Mass General Law that allows us to sign a contract longer than three years. Any other questions in finance for this? Then all in favor of positive recommendation, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Right. And that is the uh, end of our agenda. Any new business? Uh, hearing none, a motion to adjourn. Move adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great, thank you. So now, uh, financial orders. I was, was going to ask if we could move item 19.176 up, given the fact that Attorney Newman has to get up very early to prepare for his show tomorrow morning. So we don't want to, we don't want to impinge on the quality of that. Sure, sure, sure. And, the, and well, that's true. He's not on our tab. Okay. <laughs> And then, and then, of course, then I think we should do uh, offer consideration to uh, Director Wright as well um, and move yeah, items up. Believe it anyway. Uh, forget it. <laughs> There's your consideration, right? I'm out of here. <laughs> Drive safe. All right. Um, so we will see if this takes longer than a civil liberties minute. <laughs> um, this is in the year 2019 upon the recognition of Councilors Lisa F. Klein, William H. Dwight, and Jimmy Shara, 19176, an ordinance prohibiting the use of face surveillance systems being ordained by the City Council of the City of Northampton and the City Council Assembly as follows. That the ordinances of the City are hereby amended by inserting as uh, Chapter 290, Section 1, the following ordinance titled Prohibition on the Use of Face Recognition Systems by Municipal Agencies, Officers, and employees. Section 1, definitions. For the purpose of the section, A, face surveillance <clears throat> refers to an automated or semi-automated process that assists in identifying 
an individual by capturing information about an individual based on the physical characteristics of an individual's face. B, face surveillance system is any computer software or application or other technology that performs face surveillance. Uh, C, city officials shall include all officials and employees of the city, whether elected or appointed. Section 2, prohibition, it shall be unlawful for any city official to expend any city resources to obtain, retain, access, or use any face surveillance system. Uh, section 3, miscellaneous. A, three years from the month of enactment of this ordinance, this ordinance shall be placed on the agenda of the city council for such amendments as councilors may propose and the council may adopt. B, nothing in this chapter uh, shall be construed to limit uh, any individual's rights under state or federal law. C, the provisions of this ordinance shall be effective immediately upon passage. Uh, motion to approve this, please. So moved. Second. Councilor Klein and Dwight. Okay, so um, discussion. Yeah. Councilor Dwight. Um, this one, uh, as you heard in uh, uh, council, uh, Councillor spelled differently, uh, Newman's uh, presentation, but also as you heard from the public as well, we have, um, well, historically, our technology has far outstripped our policies and laws providing protections as that technology advances. Um, our, in this instance, a facial recognition technology, which we've experienced, but for instance, for me, in order to get on my phone, my phone looks at me and says, you're okay. The, you, if you're on Facebook, you can see that it will automatically start tagging people based on facial recognition characteristics. You'll also note that it fails about a third of the time. <clears throat> there are no policies currently providing protections or oversight of this of this technology that's moving rapidly and changing rapidly. Uh, the article, I think one of the articles that um, Bill Newman was referring to was the New York Times just did a rather extensive report on how Chinese, the Chinese government is using mm -hmm. uh, uh, facial recognition technology and AI basically to monitor every aspect of their citizens' lives. Now, one would hope that that's not something that would play out here, although uh, private businesses, of course, are doing that with the intent of trying to sell you something or sell you as a commodity. But in this case, we're concerned particularly about the fact that these instruments can be used to limit, restrict the freedom and liberties that we, we, we are, we're sworn to protect. That's our job. That's what the oath that we take. And um, the sponsors have been concerned about this before we even, I think, discussed this in concert about what do we do about this <coughs> and, and, and in conversations with Bill Nguyen and other members of the ACLU. This uh, proposal was originally much longer and, and probably more prohibitive. Um, uh, we ran up against the, you know, the debate that we've heard ongoing uh, as ever since the establishment of the new charter about what, to what extent do we have the authority to provide directives for uh, employees of the city. Um, in this case, this has been pared down substantially, but the fact that the effect is hopefully the same. And that is prohibiting the resources, which we do govern, which we do have the authority over, uh, being applied towards using this software. Um, there's a three-year window on this, a, a, a three-year revisit, basically, a redo opportunity uh, for a future council to um, discuss as the technology and possibly, hopefully, the state law and federal laws start to catch up with the technology as it exists. But this is the stopgap that, this is the, a minimal stopgap. Um, and it's it almost, it has a little more weight than an actual resolution, but the resolution would, would probably scream louder, at least one that I proposed, that would just say that the employment of facial recognition software, um, while it could prove 
in some instances to be a valuable tool in some cases for law enforcement. The potential harm that's available in my mind trumps that and pardon the use of that term. But so we offer this at this late stage, at this 11th hour, uh, in the hopes that uh, the council will agree that it, there needs to be, and, and by the way, I should emphasize, we had long conversations with the mayor and the chief of police. Uh, there is no uh, face, facial recognition software currently being employed by the city. Um, notwithstanding the fact that there is possibly a desire at some point to use it. Um, they were very, I mean, it was, I, was, I was grateful for their conversations and it was in the hopes that w those conversations we would come up with something that there seemed to be mutual agreement on. And I think that is this and we, and we shall find out during the uh, course of the conversation but I do hope that uh, my colleagues will join me uh, in supporting this and hopefully, and in fact, I would even request two readings for mm -hmm. obvious reasons because I would like you all to have the opportunity who have also weathered the debates around security cameras and other things, basically knowing the, the thrust of the debate and the discussion and what compels us to, to present this to you today. I would, I would appreciate having the opportunity to know your assent or dissent before we close out our session. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Other comments? Councilor Scherer. Um, as we heard from Mr. Newman and Councilor Dwight and, and others this evening, the error rate um, for this kind of software is too high and it's discriminatingly so. The, there isn't um, a margin of error that's applied equally across the entire population. So, um, and also as Councilor Dwight was just saying, this technology is moving incredibly fast for better and for worse. It's improving and becoming more accurate, um, but the scope of it is also expanding. Um, and at this, in this time of very rapidly changing technology, sometimes these sticky, hard ethical debates and the protections that Councillor Dwight was just talking about, um, they can't keep pace with that technological change. And just because we can do something doesn't mean that we should do something. And uh, history is really riddled with the bones of those horrible ethical mistakes. Um, so. This is really just asking that we as a city impose our own breaks so that we can be really thoughtful um, about the implementation of these new tools. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The other sponsor perhaps speak to it or any other member of the council? No? Councilor Bidwell. Um, yes, I'd, 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 I'd very much like to speak to this. Um, this makes perfect sense to me. I'm very much persuaded by the the information that is out there about the unreliability uh, problems with this technology. Uh, and I agree with, with Councillor Dwight that in something like this you need to look at the probability of harm versus probability of benefit. And in this case, uh, given the developing state of the technology and the lack of other regulatory regimes, uh, I think the, the potential for harm far outweighs what we understand to be the potential for benefit. But what I also appreciate about this is the fact that uh, it builds in uh, a look in three years so that those of you who will be on the council three years from now, and including those in the audience, uh, will have an opportunity to, to look then at what will no doubt be a very different uh, state of the technology. And hopefully, a different state of uh, uh, the ability to build in safeguards, but we just don't know that now. But I would, I would hope it, that in three years there would be an open-mindedness to again take a fresh look at that, uh, the benefits of, and the uh, benefits of, of use of the technology and, uh, and the potential harm of the technology. The calculus could be very different then, but right now it's clearly on the side of. Uh, 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 not permitting this technology for use in, in our city at this time. Thank you. Um, Councilor Nash hasn't spoken. Would you yield to him? Sure. Councilor Nash? Yeah, I want to voice my support for this and for, in, uh, from the perspective of the pleasure of being anonymous. 
you know, that there is, you know, right now we are here, we're being recorded, but we're serving as public figures. And there's times where, you know, you're walking down the street and it's so nice that, you know, nobody's looking at you or taking you in or maybe you bump into a neighbor and they're recognizing you because they're using traditional facial re recognition stuff by using their eyes, you know, that, um, that the, that it's, that it's really wonderful to have places where we aren't subject to being recognized. And um, so that's why I'm supporting this. Thank you. Councilor Dwight. I, I just wanted to say that actually I, I meant to mention that in the course of the discussion of legislative matters, Councilor Murphy brought up a very good point. So what scares you more, the fact that this doesn't work or the fact that it will work? And that was very telling, right. and he was right. The fact that it will work in many cases depends on who's interpreting what working is, as, as, as Councilor Newman said in their quotes. And he described, and I don't want to speak for you, but I understand your reticence to speak. Not to speak well. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's was, he was more terrified of the prospect of it working. And that caused him concern, and that prompted me a, a different way of even looking at this. The, it, the fact that it, it, if it actually, and that's what they're doing in China right now, in leaps and bounds, they're developing a biometric reservoir of information that is becoming more and more and more precise. Um, they tend to be more culturally homogenous, so they prop their error rate might not be as great as ours. But the fact is that when it does work, that literally is dominance, control, and oversight of individuals who would probably, at least in this country, and hopefully in this community, believe that that's a, something they don't want to concede or give over to a government. So that's the bigger issue, ultimately. The barge. Yes, um, I'm supporting this 100%, just like I did with the surveillance cameras. And I think in, in due respect, the language on here, I'm very, very pleased with. Plus, I'm very happy to hear, which I knew this had occurred, that um, Chief Jody Casper didn't have a problem with this, or did she? I, I, I don't want to speak for the chief in that respect. I've never heard uh, whether she signed off on this or not. And the mayor may have a better sense of that, but I don't want, I didn't want okay. to project that uh, Chief Casper um, is in agreement with this. It's, it's just that she definitely participated and was helpful in, in, in developing this. With language with it, yes. you mean? Okay. So we, so we took into consideration um, many of her expressed concerns, but I don't think we met all of them. Okay. So I just want to be clear on that. Okay. All right. But anyways, I'm happy that she at least was partly involved with it, and I'm happy with the language, and I will support this. Any other comments? Um, if I may, I'd like to just suggest some technical amendments, um, which I think help the ordinance accomplish what it's, I think, meant to do. They're all in Section 3. Let me just describe them informally first, if I may. First section, 3A. Um, it says, three years from the month of enactment of this ordinance, this ordinance shall be placed on the agenda of the City Council for such amendments as councilors may propose and the council, council <coughs> may adopt. Um, the issue with this is that it's phrased in a somewhat unusual way because, of course, an amendment, so an ordinance is, we mean it to mean either the code book, the ordinances that have been passed into law, and it's, it's like Wikipedia, we edit it from time to time. And then we have an ordinance like tonight, which is an ordinance which would amend the code book. And so we kind of mix up those, those terms, perhaps. Um, we can't just put amendments to an ordinance on a future agenda. That would have to be an ordinance that goes through the process like this one has. So it's somewhat problematic to say that in, in a date somewhat certain we're going to consider amendments. So. I think the sense of it is you just want it to be reviewed by the council around that time. So I would suggest that the word such amendments as councilors may propose and the council may adopt uh, be deleted and simply we, we substitute the word review such that it read 
Previous month of enactment of this ordinance, this ordinance shall be placed on the agenda of the City Council for review. That's kind of the first one. Let me do them all together because otherwise I have to write down who first and seconds all these. <laughs> uh, B, nothing in this chapter, nothing in this section, better, not chapter. Section is this, this area. Um, unless, no, no, no. Is this an entirely new chapter of the code? Where does this fall in the code book? That was, that was amended by inserting as chapter 290, yeah. section 1. So I think you're correct in saying that it's. Okay. Um, so there is no chapter 290 section. at all. Okay. As chapter 290, yes. So that doesn't exist. All right, so never mind that one. Uh, chapter is fine. Uh, but C, I'm going to bring in conformance with A, uh, the provisions of this ordinance shall be effective immediately, not upon passage, but rather upon enactment. Because either the mayor is assigned it or it's otherwise become law before it's effective. Those are just technical amendments, um, which I will offer formally now. I will move those amendments. Okay. Second. Just point of process, if you're amending, it seems like you have made the motion and... Right, I would second that. Right, so, just so that we know. Okay, so, That's right. so, you're correct, I think I did make that, and so Bill Dwight seconds it, Councilor Dwight seconds it. I said Bill Dwight, I'm putting people's initials down. <laughs> um, any discussion on those amendments? Any questions of understanding the amendment? Okay, can we... Done with the voice vote. If there's no discussion, all those in favor of adopting amendments, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? So those are approved. Any further discussion on this? Um, I'll just express my appreciation for the work that's gone into this. I, I read the other day, um, it, was a, it was in the Wall Street Journal, which I do not regularly read. Um, when I'm out in the golf course lighting my cigar with money, <laughs> <laughs> reading the journal like I do, you know, you know, I was researching this and it came up. Uh, it was a report, you know, not. From, uh, an, from an industry research group, I assume they research this and maybe other things, uh, about surveillance as a technology. Mm -hmm. And um, it appears that according to this report, that by 2021, the estimate is there will be one billion, with a B, billion surveillance devices, whether they're all cameras or whatever, in the world, one billion. So that's interesting. What's the population of the world at that time? Well, that's actually the time when the world uh, we have an 8 billion population. So in, in a year, there will be some surveillance device for one out of every eight people in the world. And those are clearly not distributed uniformly. But what I think is very clear is that actually where population is projected to level off, this is a technology that proceeds very quickly. Um, and I think it is, as others have noted, it's, it's, the technology is, is, is outpacing by a lot uh, the regulation almost entirely unregulated. Uh, so I think in some ways, I don't want to lose us votes, but this is a very conservative proposal. This is, let's, let's be cautious. And it, it does show some leadership, and I hope the Commonwealth uh, follows suit um, and, and looks at something like Northampton is considering here tonight uh, for the state. So, all right, any other discussion? Okay, here are no other discussion. So we're ready for a roll call. Roll call, please. Okay. Um, uh, Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murray. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Okay, that is approved. Move to suspend, suspend the rules, rule. please. All right. So I take it Councillor Dwight has yep. made a motion to suspend the rules. Second. I did. Councilor I did already. She beat you to it. <laughs> already writing the initials. <laughs> the motion is to suspend rules to allow for two readings in one night. Uh, is there any discussion about this motion? No discussion? Um, point of information, the, the rules provide for automatic rollover of ordinances. So any ordinance that is not approved tonight goes over to the new city council because there are members who are sponsoring it who will be a member of the new city council as well as this one. So if, if we do not suspend the rules, the next council votes on it whenever the new council president schedules it for a vote, um, presumably early in the next session. 
and it would be just as uh, a valid vote on second reading at that time as it would be tonight, just so counselors understand. Um, and so having said that, I mean, I, I have to say, as a, a strong supporter of this ordinance, I, I think I have to be consistent with what my position has been really my whole time as, as council president, and I hope largely consistent in the council. And unless there is a, a strong reason to, to suspend the rules, I'm really not in favor of doing that. Uh, and it's totally a legitimate thing to do. It's not wrong. It's up to the, the preference of the council. Uh, but, you know, I mean, the last time we had this debate, I mean, people talked about how, <laughs> I mean, people cited the need for um, a uh, careful process. And I think this process has been careful and there's been lots of discussion. But um, I think out of an abundance of, of caution and to be consistent with my position, I, I'm not in favor of having two readings tonight because really I don't see any cause to do so. Any comments on that? So I saw Councilor Dwight's finger go up and then Well, I'll, I'll defer to Councilor Bidwell and Klein that and then I'll Wait, well, okay, Councilor yeah. Bidwell. Um, I have the, I share the same reservation as, as, as the Council President. Um, we, we all seem here to be in, in, in agreement, clearly. We've just voted all, all supportive, but I do think it's an important matter and worthy of uh, uh, the deliberation that would take place uh, at, a, at a second vote. And I think it would be, well, as, as an outgoing counselor, my, my instinct is this is creating the law of the city. Um, it won't be, or it could be reviewed at any time, but it's built in to be reviewed in three years. Why wouldn't uh, we want the, the, the next council to, to have a chance to, to ponder this and, and to vote on it? Uh, I had thought of suggesting just de deferring the whole thing to the next council for that reason. But the compromise is we take one vote, but then the new council has their bite at the apple. So I guess I uh, would uh, uh, vote uh, uh, against the uh, waiving of rules to allow a second reading tonight. Any other discussion? Councilor Nash, would you seek recognition? Oh, so, Councilor, Councilor Klein, Klein, and then yeah. we'll go to Councilor Dwight. Um, I appreciate the concern. I have shared that concern when we um, waive rules and uh, take two votes. I think it's a really uh, well thought out process to give people space and time to do more research, ask questions, to come back and, and do a second vote. Um, this is a, a piece of legislation that I worked closely on and um, and I'm really gratified to hear the support by and large. Um, I mean, we had a, a unanimous vote here. And um, I, I think in this case, it's okay if we mm -hmm. go ahead and we take two votes. I would love to leave the council. I mean, I'm not saying this, mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to do it to give me a gift, but um, I would, <laughs> love as I'm exiting the council to be able to say that this is a, a piece of legislation that I saw from start to finish um, pass. I have no doubt that incoming colleagues would um, vote positively on this so that I know that it will, it will um, you know, come to the same resolution ultimately. But um, I think as a symbolic gesture, it would be lovely if we can Apart from the council, the five of us who are leaving, having made a vote and made mm -hmm. this contribution to the city, this very important piece of legislation um, that I think we, we need to see passed. So um, I respectfully and with great understanding of why you're both hesitant, the two that have spoken so far, um, would vote to um, waive rules and, uh, and have two votes on this. Thank you. Yeah, and great respect for that position as well, of course. So, Councilor Dwight. So, of course, uh, the two-reading phenomenon is unique to this body, actually. Uh, most the, there are other mechanisms. It's basically a result of a misinterpretation. I don't mean to relitigate this, but the fact is the reason we had two. The, it is understood the first reading is when the ordinance is introduced. That's the first reading. And the second reading comes with the vote. Um, we do it differently, we've done it differently, no one really knows why or how, and <laughs> when we discussed in the rules, it was for the reason that Councilor O'Donnell referred, that it was
was and what you just alluded to, which was the opportunity to <coughs> digest it, if you will, and to have the public an opportunity to give the public an opportunity to digest it. Um, in, in that respect, that would be the only reason at this point that I would that I would defer to that. Um, to provide the public an opportunity uh, to weigh in. So, I mean, it, the part of the difficulty here is, as I said, this is, comes at the 11th hour. <clears throat> hasn't really gotten vetted in the newspaper, hasn't been discussed it on the street, has not been, uh, we, uh, counselors have not heard feedback. I've, other than people who have helped us develop this, I haven't heard anything from uh, community members. But what compels me to ask for the second reading and to complete it tonight is for the reason I stated before was that um, all of my colleagues, all of you, have already participated in similar conversations about similar issues. Um, and there is an investment that I think translates to a, a, a knowledgeable and informed vote tonight, that, that not to say that the folks coming in would be less informed. But there's a certain investment that you all have engaged in that I would like to see honored. That's all, and, and respected, and and if you will, a, a parting gift as well for Councilor Klein. Not the best reason to make law. <laughs> at all. That's right. But still, at the same time, we have had two readings on financial orders that are significant. Mm -hmm. That the urgency comes because of certain deadlines that come that are out of our control. This deadline here came upon us somewhat out of our control. Um, but there is no urgent deadline to have this put in place because, as I said, the uh, police chief has no intention of currently investing in this software. So I will leave it to your conscience. I just uh, I just argue both sides. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I, I we'll agree with I, you. But see I don't if know I win. <laughs> Would the Council from Ward 2 defer to the Council from Ward 4? Was not spoken. Um, in addition to the extensive conversations that the three sponsors had and the conversations we had with the mayor and with the chief, um, I'll also note that this had a very robust conversation in legislative matters, and three of those four counselors are, um, are departing. So it, it feels almost a little bit unfair to me that sort of the, the main discussion um, or one of the main discussions that was had, um, perhaps the new counselors wouldn't have been um, privy to or, or had the experience of. So um, I feel like that's sort of another reason why it feels like this, for me, it feels like this body should complete this one. Um, I, I, I respect the desire of Councilor Dwight to somehow allow some coming of full circle and some some connection between previous discussions on a, what I would argue is a totally different, totally different ordinance on a totally different matter. So I don't really see any, any, any need to round things out in that in that way. This is its own important matter that, as far as I'm concerned, is unrelated to any previous ordinances that we've we've debated. There isn't a sense of urgency, um, and I think it's a very telling point that uh, if we regard this as an important ordinance, and we've all said it, it does that. There has been very, very little public attention to this, and I think it's 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 deserving of, of more public attention, more opportunity for for public input. So I'm, I'm 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 even more convinced as I think about it that I would like to see uh, a second vote uh, deferred to the new council. Hey, oh, Councilor Nash. So uh, I I'm in favor of doing two readings tonight. Um, that my sense is that this has been discussed and vetted. Um, it has been in the newspaper. It was, you know, and that, um, and I think, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable with the, the feedback that we've gotten tonight, and um, I'm comfortable with us moving forward with this. Thank you, Councillor. Other, uh, Councillor Klein. Um, one uh, slight imperative here, too, is that the ACLU of Massachusetts, and I was remiss in not um, actually thanking Bill Newman, Attorney Newman, who is here, who really kind of shepherded this process and brought us to uh, to this this uh, this ordinance, um, is 
is really conducting a campaign across Massachusetts. There is a bill in the State House. Um, we're trying by the end of 2019 to have as many cities and towns in Massachusetts um, pass ordinances along these lines so that we can really give a push to, at the state level, um, to creating a statewide ordinance. And um, we would be joining Cambridge and Brookline who are, I'm not sure if they've passed them yet or they're exactly in the same place that we are in trying to pass similar ordinances. Um, there are other towns and cities that are working on this, but we're trying to have as much um, kind of uh, ferment around this as possible uh, by the end of 2019. So it's another uh, reason that I think it's important for us as a leader in these kinds of issues in Northampton to uh, consider passing this tonight in two readings. Other discussion on this question of suspension of rules? No other discussion? Uh, roll call probably. Yep. Gee, thanks. Well, <laughs> I'm calling for roll call. How's that? <laughs> well, you have that right. No, no. <laughs> it actually is clearer. Um, so, yes, on the floor, made and seconded. And now we're going to start with Councillor Dwight. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Hold on a second. <laughs> Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. No. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. No. Bidwell, no. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Carney, yes. So by a vote of 7 to 2, the rules are suspended. Move uh, second reading. Second. Councillor Dwight moves. Positive uh, uh, approval on second reading. Councillor Carney seconds it. Um, discussion on second reading, please. Um, I think um, just as, as a note for the future, one thing that might be interesting in, in at the three-year mark before is one's face is really one aspect of a broader subject. It's not really just about faces. It's about biometric data, generally, indicators. And um, originally, I was going to make a suggestion for changes, but I'm, I'm just going to um, hold off um, because I'm satisfied with the a great amount of thought that has gone into this uh, uh, on the part of the sponsors and um, working departments and so on. But just for the just for the record, I think it might be when this is review, uh, revisited by the city council. Um, again, it's, this is proceeding so quickly. It's not just your face; it's your gait and how you walk. It's genetic information, lots of other stuff, and. Um, I think this isn't the kind of thing that you need to future-proof. And so, um, actually, it's nice that there's a review clause in here. I think that's helpful. So, anyway, uh, any other discussion on this? Second reading? Oh, Council Bidwell. Just, just a, a procedural question. Sure. And this would be a, a, a Laura question, probably. Just what is the mechanism by which we satisfy ourselves that three years from now this will appear on an agenda? What, what, what's, what's, what's the three-year tickler system we have in place? Well, it's an interesting question. I mean, I'll do my, my best answer if I may. I mean, uh, so for example, in the charter, we all know there's a 10-year review of the city charter. And that's big enough where we sort of remember it. What we almost forgot some time ago was the five-year re review requirement for the Code of Ordinances. I remember Councilor Dwight was, was president, and I was vice president, and we just, for some reason, realized, well, oh, we have to do this. And we did, I think, just in time or something, or maybe uh, even just yeah. a little bit past. So I don't think there is, except for your Google calendar, you know, where you can set a reminder for three years from now, uh, I don't think there really is any mechanism beyond, I guess, the next council president will have to review, you know, the, the landscape generally and, and make sure to to remind the next council president to start. Leave a note in the desk drawer. That would <laughs> carve it in, yes. We could, we could ask Google to remind us, I'm sure. <laughs> Google will remind us because they're observing us at all times. If, 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 
Because say, Alexa, remind us in three years. People wake me up. Bring that face. Okay. Let's just say ask and answer. Don't anger our robotic overlord. All right. So any other Is anyone here committed to being here in three years? Raise your hand. Okay, sorry. Sorry. That's what they all say. Any other discussion? Uh, let's have a roll call. And we will start with Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Klein, yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councilor uh, Labarge, yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell, yes. Councillor Shera. Yes. Councillor Shera, yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Bidwell, yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Carney, yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Okay, that is approved unanimously on second reading. Sent to the mayor for his consideration. Uh, so, do we want to do the, the override, or doesn't seem like? The, is there anyone here for anyone? Anything particular? Nothing except. <laughs> um, yeah. Shall we just go right back to regular order? Yeah. Yeah. Next is uh, financial orders. 19177 ordered execute the contract amendment relative to the fiscal year 2020 audit. Uh, may I have a motion to approve this on first reading, please? So moved. Second. Uh, made by Councillor Dwight, seconded by Councillor Carney. Which one are we doing? Um, this is as amended, just to make sure everyone understands the amendment. What, what we did was we replaced the words its members with, with the words the city council president and following to sign the committee on finance also we did the first one then the committee on finance also added after to sign the words on behalf of the full city council such that it read in part that the city council hereby authorizes the city council president to sign on behalf of the full city council standard contract amendment number two and so on the rest of what this public document says um, any further discussion on this financial order? Okay, so ready for a roll call on this. All right. So we will start with uh, Council of Barn. Uh, Council Labarge. Yes. Council Murphy. Yes. Council Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell, yes. Councilor Shera. Yes. Councilor Shera, yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Uh, Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Um, do I hear a rule to suspend, excuse me, a motion to suspend rules? This actually does have a deadline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Motion to suspend. I was about to, so I would like to uh, move to suspend the rules to allow for the second reading. Second. Okay. So, Councilor. Four people did it. So, okay. Councilor Dwight makes the motion, seconded by. Okay, who wants to be the second? Who, who Fine, Councilor. Pick someone. Okay. That's what Laura does. She literally Dwight just. Dwight and. <laughs> oh. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Uh, Councilor Dwight and Councilor Bidwell. Oh, man. That's DB and, and BD. Hope I don't get those mixed up. Uh, discussion on the question of suspending rules to allow for two readings tonight, as amended. Um, if not, sorry for the slowness here. You this is the voice vote. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's actually a room for a roll call that Laura put in here, so we'll just do that. Sorry. Okay. We'll get through it. Mayor LaBarge, David Murphy. Okay, uh, Councillor Murphy, on suspension of rules. Yes. Thank you. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell, yes. Councillor Shera. Councillor Shera, yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Bidwell, yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Carney, yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Dwight, yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Klein, yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Okay. Motion on second reading, please. So. Because rules are suspended. Okay, Councillor Carney was the motion. Made motion? Second. Yeah. And Councillor Dwight was the second. Thank you very much. I actually do appreciate the assistance about identifying who did what. So, Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor
Carney and Dwight. Discussion on second reading. Oh God. Okay. Hearing none, we're going to go to. I can have a roll call. Ready for that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shera. Yes. Uh, Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Okay, that's passed. I'm second as well. Okay. Very good. It's like a shorter agenda, but it's going to take as long as you need. I'm sorry. Sorry, Laura's earning her money right now, but if only you could replace me with an artificial intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> Streamline government. <laughs> <laughs> Overruled. Yeah. Okay. So, 19189. In order to accept gift of thermograph imager from MI. Move to approve. So that is Move. Klein, Klein and Labarge. Klein and Labarge. Discussion on first reading. Hearing no discussion. Oh, you Actually, go ahead. Yeah. I have a question for the mayor about this. The um, he said this is a it was a grant process that then turned into give a gift. Well, what and happened was they were I guess it was originally going to be um, you would apply and you'd get um, money to purchase the uh, in, in, imager, um, and then they were able I guess to acquire them at sort of bulk rate. Um, and it was more economical for them to just purchase them all in bulk and then just award the actual imager. And did they essentially gift them to all of their clients or oh, only to, those that had submitted a grant you to, application? You, yeah, you have to apply for the grant. Uh, they, they offer various grants to communities every year. And um, as I said, we've gotten them in the past um, for various things, um, uh, you know, Oddly, one year we got grants to buy step stools for people um, because apparently people are prone to climb up on their chairs to like do things and um, you know chairs with wheels don't work well for backs and things like that. So so we got things like that. Or um, one year we got a grant to do uh, safety planning in our buildings. Um, and as I said, this year we got two grants. One is going to be for some purchasing some ergonomic furniture and then the other one was going to be to purchase this and then at the last minute they said well actually we're just going to give it to you so yeah so i guess i so just wanted to say that gift. yeah the the only any concern that i would have about it being a gift per se is that it seems like it was a gift in response to a grant application exactly. yeah. and mm -hmm. so it's yeah. it's yeah um, okay but, i mean it's, it's it's not really a gift but we're accepting real property right. that's the, more the main right. reason so okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion on this financial letter? Ready for roll call? All right. Uh, Councilor O'Donnell, yes. Councilor Shera? Yes. Yes. Uh, Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Bard? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Uh, is there a request for a second reading? Yes, that? suspend the rule. Second. Yeah. Councilor Barge moves suspension of rules, seconded by Councilor Klein. Um, any discussion on suspension of rules? Hearing no discussion. Uh, Councilor Chair? Yes. Uh, Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Barge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Motion on second reading for approval? Move uh, second reading. Second reading. Okay. Um, made by Councilor. Okay. How does she do this? God. Any discussion? <laughs> on it's tiresome. Second reading. Hearing no discussion, but seeing tired expressions, and we'll proceed to a roll call vote. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor Donald. Yes. You voted yes. I'm sorry. Uh, Councilor Shera. Yes. Okay, approved on second reading. Next, 19190, in order to authorize five year agreement uh, for Card Connect services at Senior Center reading. Move, Move to approve. Um, second. Moved by <coughs> Councilor Labarge. Yes. Seconded by Councilor Dwight.
and the previous vote did pass, but I'm required to announce. All right, uh, discussion on this? No further discussion other than what we heard in finance. Uh, so, Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Barge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Donald. Yes. Councillor Sherry. Yes. Sherry, yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Bidwell, yes. Proved in first reading. Move to suspend rules, please. Second. Uh, made by Councillor Dwight. Second by Councillor Nash. Discussion on suspension of rules. Uh, hearing no discussion. Last word, roll call. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Approved on, uh, so rules are suspended. Motion to approve on second reading. Second. 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 Yes. That was a second from Councillor Barge. Councillor Barge, that was a second from you? Yes. Did you second it? <clears throat> discussion on second reading, please. Hearing no discussion on second reading, I will proceed to a roll call vote, starting with Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Okay. Approved on second reading. Um, next, 19180, in order to appropriate. Uh, Four million dollars in free cash to various funds and projects. Move for a second. second. So I'm going to go, Councillor Klein and Dwight. And Dwight. And I like the people who have launched the nuclear weapons. We agree. I have to agree on everything. <laughs> or shoot each other. That was the other option. On those Actually, this, don't they get, get four? Because they expect two won't destroy the world. Right. <laughs> um, this is a very dark subject. <laughs> it's a Jesus. It's a nuclear free city. No, no. <laughs> uh, uh, this is on second reading, discussion on second reading. Um, hearing no discussion, Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney, yes. Councilor Dwight, yes. Councilor Klein, this yes. is second reading. You realize this is all contrast because I usually go so fast. <laughs> it's, that you, you just dragging out your last moments as council. Oh, that must be it. Yeah. Savoring it by yeah. saying all your names repeatedly <laughs> and writing the, the letter Y. <laughs> all right. So now, <laughs> oh, <my laughs> write the word Y. Yes. Yeah. Why? 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right, so one nine one eight one. Wait, one nine one eight one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a song. <laughs> there you go, Jared. Uh, this is in order to appropriate retained earnings to enterprise stabilization funds and projects. Move to approve. Second Made by Councillor Barr. Second by Councillor Bidwell. Yes. <clears throat> discussion on second reading. Uh, hearing no discussion. Uh, Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Barge. Yes. Approved on second reading. Next. One nine one eight two. In order to rescind borrowing authority for Audubon tank repairs. Second. Second. By Councillor Dwight. Second by Councillor Bidwell. Any discussion? Second reading. Uh, hearing no discussion. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Barnes. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. <laughs> Asked on second reading. Next, 19183, in order to hold special election for $2.5 million operating override on March 3rd. Oh, approval, please. Second. second. Made by Councillor Dwight and, and Klein. Yep. Just do it loud. She does. She's louder. Discussion. Discussion um, on the question of the override. Were you raising your hand or were you just I'm shifting? Uh, further discussion on this. Still me. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think she was I asked, doing? I asked you a direct question. You answered, and I didn't 
understand what was being said to me. So <laughs> my fault, please, Madam Vice President. May I please comment? You certainly are. <laughs> Uh, it's like the dysfunctional family <laughs> portion of the oh. city council. This looks like the, the notes of a madman. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm a little bit just scrambling here, so bird hop. Please take over. Okay. Um, first, I want to say sorry that I was not here for the first vote of, for putting the override on uh, the override question on the ballot. Um, it's not something that I would ever, ever want to miss um, because. Putting the question on the ballot is the responsible thing to do. I would never want to deny the people of Northampton their say and their participation and their opportunity to determine our path forward. Um, we'll be having a very big community discussion for the next couple of months, and it's a conversation that we've known was coming. Um, every year we've been reminded and updated on it. Uh, Mayor, how many years? Seven. seven. Once more for the back, seven. Seven years. We've been having this discussion about how we're going to have to have this discussion. Um, so it's a conversation that we need to have, and to deny that reality would be to shirk our responsibility, the responsibility that um, for which we've been elected. So um, I will absolutely vote to put it on the March 3rd ballot, um, and I will very willingly participate in that conversation that we need to have. Um, and um, I am ready to talk to anyone who wants to talk to me about this. So again, I'm very sorry that I wasn't here at the last meeting. Um, spot on. And, <clears throat> and the fact is, is it is our obligation to put this on the ballot and put it to the people to, to have a conversation. Uh, it is incumbent upon the mayor and the councilors to make their case and for people to, to you know, you heard from Mr. Waterman, who I thought was quite thoughtful in his comments, um, said the case hasn't been made to him yet, but the fact is there is the opportunity. It has to be done. The reason Proposition 2 and a half, at least when the proponents were offering it, they, they didn't say that the whole idea was to literally throttle government, the local governments to death, although that was their intent in my belief. Their stated objective was to require local governments to make their case before the citizens each time as to why they have to ask for more money. It's literally built to fail. As someone pointed out in the conversation uh, in, in public comment, it's set at 2.5%, which is half percent below uh, the standard inflation rate. It's guaranteed to fail. Every community, if it wants to continue to function, because electric rates, because all the all the things that pressure all the citizens who are suffering from this, also pressure the the community in the in, in the city. Our electric rates don't stay static. Our our employee rates don't stay static. Our uh, I notice some people speaking who actually benefit, for instance, from pensions from the city. Those don't stay static. We have to pay for those pensions, um, and the fact is is that the the state in its continued ab uh, abdication of, of responsibility has continued to put the greater burden on communities to do to do more with less and we in this community has been proven and the bond rating is a perfect example to be a very fiscally sound a very fiscally well managed city but still we have to make the case and I think it's appropriate and the time to make the case is when this because of the way Proposition two, 2 and a half is structured, that we now have to ask the citizens to make a choice. And to not give them the opportunity for that choice or that discussion or is, is bad governance. It's not the right way to affect government. It's not voting to put this on the ballot is not an endorsement of the override. It is merely an endorsement of providing the opportunity for the public to weigh in and discuss. It doesn't say I'm for the override. It says I want the city to make its case, and then it's incumbent upon us to go beyond that if, if, if we feel that we need to support it. And if we're opposed to it, then we have our opportunity to stand in opposition. But the fact is, if there's no election, that doesn't happen. And that is an abrogation of our authority and an abrogation of our responsibility. And um, it would be to our shame if we didn't pass this. So I. I have no problem voting for this in the positive. Other discussion? You wish to be recognized, Mr. Mayor? Um, only just to provide, um, I, I listened very carefully to the public comment, and I, I appreciated the public comment because I think it, it um, 
gave me some insights on the kinds of things we'll need to talk about over the next several months. Um, but I did just want to, for context, Proposition two and a half was enacted in 1982, um, 38 years ago. Um, and in the 38 years that Proposition two and a half has been in effect, the city of Northampton has enacted two general operating overrides in 38 years. So I just want to provide that context because um, that's it. Uh, we've attempted four um, and only enacted two general operating overrides in 38 years. So um, I heard some every two years, every four years, every, but literally in 38 years, two general operating overrides. So, and I look forward to, to setting up the, um, the uh, town hall meetings. I've already been reached out to by the Ward 3 Neighborhood Association who's interested in, in working on one in Ward 3. And in January, I look forward to setting up um, hearings, uh, or hearings or town halls rather at all the wards so I have an opportunity to make that case, like you said, Councilor Dwight. And I look forward to that. And it really is a choice. It's a choice for the voters. And we have to abide by the will and the choice made by the voters. Um, I just want them to have all the information when they make that choice. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Other discussion? Um, we are ready for a roll call vote. And so, uh, mm -hmm. Councilor O'Donnell votes yes. Councilor Shera? Yes. Councilor votes yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor LaBarge? No. Councilor LaBarge votes no. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Yes. Councilor Murphy votes yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor Nash votes yes. So by a vote of eight to one, uh, that um, is approved on second reading. Um, next, 19185, order just property tax exemption eligibility requirements for seniors under national law, chapter 59, section five, second reading. Move approval. Move approval. Discussion, second reading. Hearing no discussion from the council, we'll proceed to it. Well, Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Barge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor Donald. Yes. Next, 19184 in order to it. So that is approved, by the way. So next, uh, 1918 on second reading. Next, 19. 184, in order to accept Master in Law Chapter 138, Section 12, permitting cordials in the Coors. Second reading. Second reading. Second. Made by Councilor Dwight and Councilor Shara. Discussion on second reading, please. None. Okay. Uh, sorry for roll call. Councilor Bidwell, <coughs> absent or not voting or something, not present. Uh, Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Carney, yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Barge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Shara? Yes. It is approved by a vote of 8-0 on second reading. Um, we have done the Hatfield Street poll petition. It appears that we have two left. Uh, first is an ordinance, 19137, an ordinance to amend um, Chapter 312, Vehicles and Traffic. Um, explanatory parentheses, part of the, the name, to delete handicapped parking space on Pleasant Street in parking lot off of Gleason Plaza. Motion to approve this, please. Motion approved. Um, so made by Councilor Klein and seconded by Councilor Dwight. Discussion. Um, we defer, defer to Councilor Nash, perhaps. Yes, yeah, I would. Councilor Nash, will you favor us with? Sure. So this uh, this parking space, this handicapped parking space, was located in the uh, depot parking lot, which is now lo no longer there. Um, the uh, the ordinance references parking on Pleasant Street because. It actually, the ordinance references Pleasant Street, but it was actually in the depot lot. So um, the depot lot is not there. 
this parking space is not there. And, um, and I did go through the parking lot, oh, a few weeks ago uh, before the TPC dealt with this, and I believe I counted like eight or nine handicap parking spaces that are now there in the parking lot under private management. So there are handicap spaces there. Explanation. Any dis further discussion on this ordinance? Uh, yeah, all it does is um, the record, obviously, a public document. You can look up. Um, there you go. I just had it. It just says delete as follows, and it deletes the, the part of uh, the, that schedule um, in 312.117, Schedule 16, on street and off street handicapped parking spaces. It deletes Pleasant Street off Gleason Plaza. Uh, first parking space on the westerly most side of the most northerly end of the parking lot east of the first entrance off of Gleason Plaza. That just is deleted. Right, there's no other discussion from the council about this ordinance. We will proceed to a roll call vote. And that will be kicked off by Councilman Carney. Yes. Ms. Carney votes yes. <coughs> Councilman White. Yes. Councilman Klein. Yes. Councilman Barge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Shara. Yes. Councilor Shara. Yes. Councilor Bill. Yes. <coughs> that is approved in first reading. Um, next is uh, one nine one six seven, an ordinance requiring the use of organic pest management practices in the municipal places where children play. A motion to approve this in second reading, please. Two. Second. Can approve. Second. Uh, <laughs> I'll take your pick. I'm having vertigo. <laughs> so, Councilor Dwight, you made the motion. Uh, Councilor Klein, Klein, Klein made the motion. Klein made the motion. Who seconded? I'd be under second. Okay. Everyone's yelling, "Pick one!" <laughs> you notice that? You're like, "Pick one!" Pick one. <laughs> I probably deserve it. Bill picks. Right, Bill? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a problem. Right, so. Lords, if it's Willie's watching this on TV, Brian, I'm sick. I can't come to work. <laughs> Dave, she actually is very legitimate. She, she will watch this, so be careful. That's true. She will definitely watch <laughs> yes, this. Yes. <laughs> You're in trouble. <laughs> Hi, Laura. I just praised her as <laughs> effusive at the beginning of the meeting. And yeah, she's laughing. <laughs> All right. Uh, discussion on. The ordinance on second reading, please. Any? Councilor Nash. I had some speechifying that I was going to do last time at around 12.30 at night, <laughs> and I thought best to wait. And um, actually, now that I know what I'm going to say, I probably could have pulled it off. But um, simply to say, this is, uh, this is number two of nine recommendations by uh, Skipper, and that, um, that it's, um, it, and I'm, very happy to be co-sponsoring this and I also want to recognize the amazing work that Councillor Klein did working on this ordinance, reaching out to uh, DPW and working with Director Lascalia to uh, work out the details on this. Um, I, what I really appreciated it is that it meets the goals of, of the select committee and also it, it it works for our DPW and that um, that it's not always a perfect match but it's it's a match that I think is, is going to work here um, the other thing I want to say is there are eight other recommendations from that our select committee and I'm committing to work on those recommendations in the next term and, um, and I look forward to my former skipper colleagues to, you know, reaching out and working with me to reach those goals. Um, so anyway, so thank you. Melissa will be available. I think you have to say what you just said. Aye, aye. She said aye, aye. <laughs> <laughs> At least you didn't speak like a parrot or something. This is the one time I'll allow anyone to vote twice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, <laughs> Councillor Klein. Yeah, I, um, I also, because we were at the 11th hour, <laughs> the expression um, last week, it was 12.25 or something when we started this, I basically kind of read the ordinance and, and didn't um, 
didn't speechify. And I'm not going to speechify tonight because I know that um, my colleagues here are on board. And um, we have the skipper report, the Select Committee on Pesticide Reduction report that um, includes a recommendation of legislation very much along the lines of what we've produced here. Um, and I just actually wanted to um, thank everybody who's been involved in the process, and that's definitely my colleague here, Jim Nash, who um, went through uh, creating the resolution that created the Select Committee on Pesticide Reduction, uh, the Select Committee on Pesticide Reduction members who worked incredibly hard over four months, um, and then the work that we did and that Councillor O'Donnell also was very involved in um, working with the DPW and the health department and the mayor's office and the city solicitor to create something that we could all agree on and move forward. And it was, um, for me, it was as, as I leave the city council, um, it, it felt like one of the kind of best pieces of work that I was able to be a part of collaboratively with a group of uh, people, both city staff and colleagues on the council and on the select committee. So I just really wanted to um, acknowledge that everybody um, moved in this kind of collective direction to create this ordinance. And I'm really grateful that my uh, colleagues here on the council unanimously supported it last time, and I hope you will do so again. Thank you. I, I just want to let you know that the Youth Commission last night was introduced. I introduced this to along with a 34-page report, and they are, they, first of all, didn't understand why this didn't exist already, but, uh, you know, they're young, don't worry <laughs> about, about the cynical slow process of governance. They're very much in favor, and in fact, in, in, in talking about it in concert with the resiliency plan, as, as, and that is an aspect that we, we emphasize, but maybe not enough, that the fact that this is, would be an integral part about how we go forward and adapt to climate change. And and they have a great sense of urgency for some reason. <laughs> maybe it's their futures, and maybe it's the fields they play on, or the fields that they want to play on that are currently actually under the school's aegis. But so just to let you know, if, if you need any more support, they are, they are <coughs> adamant and vehement. So I, I would very excited that you guys brought this forward. So. That's good. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, so I just want to offer a quick, um, again, some technical amendments just so it goes in in, in the right form, if I may. Um, and the first is I spoke to both uh, Councilor Klein and uh, Director Lascalia about these. On page three, uh, it currently reads, in the presence of stinging, biting, crawling, and or flying insects um, th that may pose an immediate threat to users of the facilities, et cetera. I'm pretty sure that describes every insect. You know, every insect either crawls or flies or whatever. So uh, what it should say is simply, in the presence of, and we delete stinging, biting, crawling, and or flying. So it reads, in the presence of insects that may pose an immediate threat to users, et cetera. So I would propose that change and deletion as an amendment. I'll second that. Thank you. Any discussion on the amendment? I don't understand the amendment. Any questions? OK. Uh, voice vote. All those in favor of the amendment, please say aye. 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 Opposed any abstention? So that is approved by a vote of 9 to 0. <coughs> um, one other thing from my discussions today. Um, purpose on the very first page. Paragraph one, the first or the last sentence of the under, under first part of purpose. Since this is long, um, but the sentence begins: This ordinance to be known as the Keeping Children Safe from Pesticides Ordinance, designed to, over a period of three years, reduce and ultimately eliminate the use of chemical fertilizers and pesticides by implementing, it says, organic, an organic management program in the places children play. Um, I would just like to remove an organic management program and put in organic management practices. Um, I don't know if anyone seconds that for discussion. I'll second for discussion. Okay, thank you. Um, you know, I, it just, it seemed like it's a, a kind of a, a technical concern that uh, Director Lascalia voiced. Um, 
uh, for the record, I mean, this, this purpose doesn't, as I, I do not believe this purpose will actually go into the code of ordinances because it's a preamble. So in a way, it doesn't really matter, but that was sort of the understanding I got from talking to the director today. So again, so the change to remove an organic management program to organic management practices. That's my amendment. Councilor Klein. Um, I actually think that that is a, a distinction that should not be made. Uh, it's interesting that, again, at the 11th hour, Director Lascalia brought that up because, you know, she has seen this. She saw it for, uh, you know, over the last month, and we had many discussions, including a very long three-hour meeting, um, in-person meeting. First of all, the term program is kind of the accepted lingo in organic pesticide programs management um, because it's seen as an integrated uh, a number of different kinds of practices that make up a program. Um, it's not these disparate practices that um, you know you choose one or some. It's it really is part of a comprehensive program, a comprehensive method of management. Um, again, it doesn't matter a whole lot, so I'm not sure why the quibble here, but in terms of um, how, what language is used in organic management, program is the acceptable term, and I think that differentiation of you know, disparate practices versus um, a comprehensive program is an important distinction. Um, so I, you know, I won't vote to support this amendment. Um. Out of, out of deference to the sponsor, I withdraw the amendment. Um, I just offered it to me. It didn't, I didn't understand that it um, was as substantive as, as that. So I, I put it in as kind of a clarifying thing, which I thought it would be good. But I agree. I mean, it's not even part of the ordinance. So I'm fine with that. So I withdraw my amendment, having heard from the sponsor. Any other discussion at all on anything having to do with the order, ordinance? OK. So it sounds like we can proceed to a roll call vote then. On the, on the ordinance itself, because the amendment is withdrawn, so it's the ordinance itself. And we're going to start <clears throat> so with Councillor Dwight, is that right? Yes. I believe so. I think more up to me. Yes. Councillor Dwight votes yes. <coughs> Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Okay, so that is approved on second reading. Have we gotten through everything? <laughs> you got to let me double check, folks. Sorry. Because we've been jumping around. We did the poll petition. We did this. We did the. Did you do the liqueurs and cordial? We did. Mm hmm. <laughs> in elementary school, they would yell at you, don't pack up. Don't pack up. Although well, you probably can. Do you agree we did everything? I, I gave it a check. I think we did all the important stuff anyway. Yeah. Yep. I, think I think that only moving counselors can make the last motion. Yeah, yeah, I, just, I, I would be. Yes, do I hear a motion? I would be pleased to make my final motion. <laughs> to adjourn. Bidwell moves to adjourn. I'll second that. Oh. Roll call, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's a frivolous motion. Be called. Are you really requesting a roll call? Because oh. I have to grant it. You really? Uh, yeah. Oh. Do it. So I haven't made my last vote yet. No. Mm. I'll just drag it out. Council LaBarge, <laughs> we're doing a roll call. Council LaBarge. Council LaBarge, <laughs> will you adjourn? <laughs> roll call. For adjourning. Adjourn. <laughs> Councilor Klein. Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, Councilor LaBarge. Yes. Vote for adjournment. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Good night and good luck. <laughs> I know. Also known as yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Shara. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight for making it. No. Divided <laughs> <laughs> vote. Um, Thank you. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night to the public. <laughs>